Whoa. Burning Bridge is 2 p.m. September, October 2nd. It's pretty good. October 2nd. Uh, we're trying to, I'm going to have my friend call in. Uh, he's a cop. I just want to figure out, uh, I guess the shooting happened last night. Go get Mike, Brian. Who's Mike? The other guy in the, in the lobby. Okay. And uh, uh, I guess the shooting happened last night. So anyway, I, I just want to figure out how you kill all these people from the, uh, oh, he's on the line now. All right. Go ahead. Take. I'll take him. Yeah, what's up? Yo, what's up? Can I say who you are? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, go ahead. All right, he's Bob Coob. He works at the uh, uh, Ocean City, New Jersey Police Department. He's a how 20-year veteran. Ryan. Nice to meet you. Oh, Almost right. 30 years. Oh, you look skinny. You're not 30. Yeah, you look Almost like fucking 30. Man. Thank you. Sure. You're allowed to swear? Aren't you on duty? <laughs> yeah, it's your show, isn't it? Yeah, but aren't you on duty? Can't you get in trouble since we're being recorded? Just don't say the That's N-word. The That's the least we have to worry about nowadays is us swearing. All right, so wait, so it happened last night? Yeah, it happened, happened, early, it happened at 10 p.m. in Vegas. I guess so. I was already asleep or trying to go to sleep. All right, so, uh, so the guy was on a 30-second floor? Yeah, 30-second floor. And, um, they don't have a balcony, know, do they? He just broke out the window? Nah, started... he shot the, I think he shot the window out, yeah. And then he just started shooting? Yep. So he yep. didn't like the show? Yep. Is that what happened? Oh. I don't think that was oh, it. Oh, too that soon. Was too or too soon. soon. All right, so what? So how do you shoot that? You can shoot somebody from that high up, that many people? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's probably much more effective to be above somebody shooting down. Um, and you know, the, the, he's probably shooting, I would think, like a two two three round or 7.62, some, you know, high-power rifle round. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're effective you know, really effective, probably about 500 yards person to person and probably about 800 yards for like an area target, which Jesus he was shooting Christ. at, you know, he was just probably just spraying and, and you so know, he was, so at, 30, wasn't really aiming. at 30 second floor, he's 300 feet up and it doesn't affect anything. Well, it's going to, if you're shooting, if you're shooting, you know, like at, at a target range and you're shooting straight ahead of yourself, the bullets going to drop in trajectory the further out they go. I think like at 400 yards, they'll probably drop almost two feet in trajectory. That's why, you know, snipers and people have, they have to adjust their sights. But when you're shooting down, it's a whole different story. Yeah, it sounds um, like And it won't. You're, you're, li you're, <laughs> you're literally just spraying and praying at that time. And just, you know, that's, it's like in wartime when they would just use automatic weapons and spray yeah. onto like the beaches and stuff like that. You know, you know, you know what you're going to hit. So it doesn't run out. It doesn't run out any juice, any velocity, the bullet. Well, it's going to, it's going to always lose, lose velocity, but they're traveling so fast that, I mean, it, it, you know, it's still very effective, obviously. And, um, it was a tragedy, man. He, you know, and nobody knew where it was coming from. It took a long time for him to figure out where it was even coming from. Yeah. I saw and, uh, a video. I heard that it really did sound like firecrackers going off. Well, if you're not around gunfire a lot, you're not trained for it, it. It does sound like that. You know, it's not like what you hear on TV, the big booms and it's, um, you know, and people were in shock, you know, they, it was shock and all. That's fucked up. Anyway. So any advice for people? Yeah. Don't go to Jason Aldean concert, I guess. Hello. I mean, yep. For a while. I would have said that before the shooting. <laughs> oh, before the shooting, that oh, was no. too soon. I don't even know who the shooter really, is. That's how I, 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 I just, oh, okay. I tell you what, I handed to uh, the Metro PD out there, the sheriff's department. Those guys are unbelievable. The, the response, and um, you know, you just got to get cover. You got to get to somewhere where you, where you have cover. It was a shame. People looked like they didn't know where it was coming from. A lot of people were, like running actually yeah, towards it. Yeah, because they didn't. They didn't know it was coming from. You couldn't see it. No, the guy. and they were running toward. They were running towards it at one point, and um, you know that was a, a fatal mistake. But it's not, you know. They didn't, they didn't expect that. But it's when you when you hear situation. shooting, when you hear firecrackers or shooting, you just go to the ground, right? Yeah, any any kind of boom nowadays. Yeah, it's scary, man. It's a, it's a tough world we live in. Tough world. Even if I see a woman with like a, just her face covered, only could see her eyes. I drop to the ground. Yeah. Just yeah. At, just at the at the Penn Smart Station. Move. Tackle. Yeah. And if I see a guy with a nice body, I drop to my knees. Anyway. <laughs> hey, all right, Mike. Here we go. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, we sure will. <laughs> Kevin, Bre Kevin Brennan's blow bang. <laughs> oh God, Kevin! I just got hit from Forty Second Street and Obscurity Avenue. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You guys are trying to keep it serious. Okay. Yeah, anyway, sorry. but it's a, it's a, a, no. It's just it's fucked up because you're a cop, right? You don't want people to have guns, right? It's it. Hey, listen, I, I, I'm pro gun. Um, you know. This is this was a tragic situation, but you know, good people aren't going to do shit like this. And there's millions, no, here's of, the thing. millions and millions Here, of good people. I'll say it. Here's the thing. Right. Like, let's say, let's say guns are legal, which they are. 
Okay, so if a guy shows up with an AR-15 or whatever, unless you have your AR-15, he's going to get you because he's he could just spray you. So so it, it's ridiculous that people think like, well, if I have my gun, the guy's still going to kill you because he's not even doesn't even have to have a good aim. He just sprays everybody. So unless you bring your AR-15 to the bank and the CVS every time you go to the fucking store, because then people are going to like, why does this motherfucker always have an AR-15? Yeah, I usually have mine, but I was at a. The ele- uh, so the uh, so you the ele- go, you go you go sorry. So the element of surprise is always going to win. Am I right, officer? Well, I mean, it, it, it's obviously an advantage, but if you if you have like say you're, you have, trained, say you're, trained, police, you're trained, you're trained, you're trained, you're ready for the trained, element they, of surprise. You walk right, up to so a black have, man's car, you expect oh bad things. That's terrible. <laughs> Here we if, go. If, but if oh, all no. duty officers are car- if all duty officers are carrying their weapons, and and I'd rather have a bunch of guys carrying that are good people, you know. You know, I'd rather have it and not need it than not have it and need it. You yeah, know but what these I mean? guys, the element of surprise wins every time. These guys never get shot. Sometimes they get tackled, but they never get shot. But the guy's dead. They right? do all the, the death. This guy's dead. He killed himself. He did really? Because he, yeah. he didn't want to pay his bill. We get him sometimes. Well, those we mini bars are brutal. No, those but guys I'm are saying, amazing. That response was amazing out there. No, how, but I'm saying the element of the element of surprise. You guys are prepared for the element of surprise, the cops, but regular people aren't. So even if they have a gun. They're still gonna get shot because they're not ready, and they'll panic, and they'll have to grab their gun. They're not. Re- they're not ready for an assault like the guy with the AR-15. He's ready to m- murder on the spot, and you're sitting there like, "Oh, where's my gun?" Like, I, you know, uh, honey, you have my gun. Right. Honey, I told you. You know, people can't even find yeah. their cell phones. So how are they gonna no. find their fucking gun? Yeah. Under, on, I'm saying under pressure. It's a very it, it, the AR-15s are they're a bad situation. You ever fired a gun? Yeah, they're, they're huh? automa- fired, automatic they're weapons no, are, uh, are are nasty, man. They are. But uh, hey, you listen. You don't want you don't want AR-15s on the street, do you? Well, I don't want people walking down the street with AR-15s. But you know, I believe it's your right to own one. I really do. I'm pro gun, man. I think uh, you know, there's there's a lot more good people out there than bad people, and uh, we have the right to bear arms and uh, protect ourselves, man. You know, it's the way it goes. What about like another a cop thing is if. I'm asking for a friend, but if you're in like a like a rub and tug, <laughs> and you they bust the rub and tug, do does the person getting the tug get arrested, or they just tell them to get out of there? That's a good question, Kevin. Answer that for him. We've yeah. been there. But they usually have. Well, I, <laughs> luckily, I come so little that yeah, they that there's very little evidence. Can't prove in court. Yeah, there's right. very little evidence. It's a dry cough. Mean. Yeah, it was yeah. just a. Uh, I'm right. like that's that's sperm. Uh. Right. No, well, they're looking for your dick. It's your bad luck. Dick. There you go. No, but I, I actually, the, the one thing about rub and tug, since yep. they're usually cash business, right. I get nervous. I don't. I, I used to. I don't go there really anymore because no. I can't afford it. <laughs> no, but I'm saying back in the day when I used to go, I used to get nervous going late in the day because I. That's a perfect place to rob, right? It's all oh, yeah. Asian ladies. Yeah, but you get buzzed not, in. You huh? get. They're. They're. A no, dude. They, they're not going to buzz like some random guy in. But if they buzz <laughs> a guy in, it's all cash. They. You know they don't make a deposit midday. So. Right. <clears throat> And, you know, there's some mafia running it probably or some yeah, kind of organized, organized crime. But still, it's a great place. So I don't want to be getting a, in the middle of a fucking hand no. job. I don't want to get robbed. No, no. You, know I mean? no that, you don't get robbed in that because they'll blow anybody's fucking head off in that place. Yeah, my friend they'll goes. Shoot, they'll shoot you, right? They don't want no witnesses. No. My friend goes to the two for places where you get jerked off on the table shower and then you get jerked off after the massage. Well, where's this place? <laughs> in the way, I'll ask my friend. So you guys <clears> are <throat> becoming fast friends. My friend. Yeah, to me, he said he hey, said listen, 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 white. Hey, listen, while you guys are jerking each other off, I have to go save lives, man. <laughs> All right, come right ahead. Thanks, Coop. All right, Black Lives Matter. All right, man, peace. Thank you, buddy. Later. All right, you wearing sunglasses? Yeah, no, what the hell? You look, you look cool for lunch. Yeah. I love it. I, I wear sunglasses on the show. Anyway, uh, we're here. With, we're blessed today with Brian P. McCarthy. Hey, folks, thanks. Brian P. McCarthy on Twitter. That's and, right. Uh, Brian's wearing glasses because he's blind. What was that? You guys know he was blind? A little bit. I came in with a cane, so it's pretty obvious. Yeah, he's blind, so you just yeah. thought he was an egomaniac? Yeah, I, thought I this could was tell. A, and it's I thick. Think. I thought this was a pet store. I thought he store. was being rude when he was like, who <laughs> know, are <right>? you? <laughs> Who's that cunt? <laughs> sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Wait, did, did you here. bring your stick? Yeah, I always ask. I can't get through Midtown. Are you kidding me? It's like... Oh, did they oh, see God, your God, stick? When you yeah, I brought the stick out. Yeah, yeah. I need that stick in Midtown. I do. Yeah, exactly. Beat Puerto Ricans. <laughs> oh, no. Mike Boschetti. Mike Boschetti, hey, legendary. Mike Boschetti. Uh, there he is. You put out some. You put out some dirt about me the other day. We haven't. No, speaking of Mike Boschetti, I saw you tweeted the other day that you you think you're too nice a guy for show business. That's oh yeah, true. you got to be a brutal son of a bitch. Are you in show business? Uh, I'm just kidding, Mike. Nice I, I am being nice to Mike. Oh, Twenty men. 
What's that? Mike, Mike, so you think you think it's holding you back being a nice guy? Well, you know what? You got to be who you are, right? You yeah. can't just be a total I dick and be me. You're a dick. Yeah, but you got to confess. You got a, you you uh, unleashed one of my secrets. I never told anybody. Because what? I do have Irish blood. I could never tell the Ginzos that on Staten Island. Okay. Did you do so one of those? Half, you're half Irish, half Italian. Yes. So that means you're you're angry and angry. A- angry and angry. Like Ray Liotta and Goodfellas. But you're not. But you're not like a. You're not like. You don't get mad though. You get no, mad. I get. And I get you tweet it. But you do. You, do you strike out at people? No, that's as far as it goes to tweet. Well, it's hard to heat somebody. You're a nice guy, right? Pretty so much. Who do you think? Who do you? What is what? You think that's holding you back? That you? Yeah, people that like arrogance in this. I think. Like who are you talking about? Like people that they just names seem to like. Names. I don't want to name names. Bernie but. Bridges. That's what, that's what the show's oh, called. Uh. What's that guy's name who had that show on Comedy Central? Jason Steinberg. I'm the worst at names. Oh, no, that oh, Steinberg. Don't get me started with him. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Low-hanging fruit, Anthony folks. Anthony Jeselnik, right? Are you, yeah, are yeah. you a guy like him? Are you talking about no. a guy like him? I, I actually well, met him. He's a handsome guy. He's he, very nice to me, though. He's very, very nice. You know, he probably didn't, he, you know, it was probably a bad day for him because he's, <laughs> he's usually a complete asshole. No, but... Really? Uh, I don't, no, he's arrogant. I mean, he's arrogant on stage. Of course, he's going to be a little though, arrogant right? off stage, huh? No, no but I, 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 I don't mean like. No, he's a he's a bit of a fucking. Uh, you know, he's a little stuck up when you meet him. I mean, I don't mean arrogant. I, I mean, mean, I worked on his show a little bit in California, so actually, I'm supposed to like him. No, he was nice to me. <laughs> right. Oh God. But before I kind of knew him, he was just. He's like one of those guys who just acts like he's got it all figured out. No, but I don't mean arrogant. I mean, people don't, don't take any shit from people when it's like, it's like Rosie about? O'Donnell, Leary, Rosie Andrew O'Donnell. Dice Clay, those people, Rosie you know? I'll be like, O'Donnell. fuck you, I'm Rosie. I, fuck you, Ash. Well, she's a lesbian. Are you? Yeah, the fuck you, then fuck Rosie O'Donnell. Well, Roseanne, but you know what? It's really bad in the long run. You're talking about women? You're talking about big women with R in their no, name? No, but Roseanne, right? Yeah. I heard, I don't really, I never met her, but I heard she was very fire happy in the beginning, like letting people go right away. Who That's gives not this cool. shit? Yeah, you know yeah. what? You should fire people because most people suck. She, they, you know, we know what happens when you get a sitcom, Mike? You get a, you hire these writers. You don't know who they are. They, maybe they write a good spec script. Maybe they wrote for fucking Who's Who's My Daddy. Is that, was that a show? <laughs> Better be. Could have anyway. Dude, Where's My Car? It was a movie. No, anyway, so they, they have the, they have the little bit of a resume. They get these writing jobs and then you, 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 you're with them and you're like holy shit this guy's a stiff a lot of them are just they just they uh, their buddy is a uh, showrunner so he hires them and i met all kinds of showrunners out there i'm like why well, you're not funny at all like they they didn't write funny they didn't say funny you right. know what i mean oh so, so then you fire them i i try to fire my fucking showrunner uh in the middle of the of the middle of the uh, development thing and then the network's like you can't fire them why not? they won't pay you because they won't pay you okay I thought, yeah, but I thought, I thought, shit walks, I thought, money talks. I thought, I thought, I yeah, but I thought it was your show. Get rid of that fucking. No, when you what you do is you get the first season, you get the show picked up, then you do one season, then you fire everybody, then you divorce your wife, you get a new blonde, hot fucking uh, wife, and you treat her like shit because you can. You're more brutal than I thought. (laughs) I have have a fucking, I, I have it all written down. I have it all planned out, Mike. You think I don't? It's better never going to happen. You better get cracking. <laughs> I know. I'm running out of time. Yeah, but I have, it, I have it planned out, too. Like my biological clock is ticking. <laughs> I have it planned out, too, to move the French the next to Johnny Depp, have a castle, and fucking humiliate douchebags. You invite him out there on vacation. Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp's a loser. Yeah. He's an alcoholic. He's an alcoholic. Well, Nobody not, gets in that much trouble with that much success unless you're... not throw the baby out of the bathwater. People always go like, oh, you know, uh, what's, a, like, what's that guy's name? The Matt Damon? Right. Is he getting into a lot of trouble? He's famous. He makes a lot of money. Is he getting into a lot of trouble? No, because he's not an alcoholic. And and first of all, and he didn't marry. He didn't marry. He married a regular woman. That's another thing these people do. They marry fucking celebrities. Right. Celebrities should marry each other. Matt Damon oh. married a regular gal. A nanny or a waitress. And whatever. Right. She, she'll bring him a drink when he's uh, thirsty. Right. The married. Always girl marry a waitress yeah, if right. you can. <laughs> Always marry a waitress if you can, because she's gonna serve you. Yeah. And they always fill the. Honey, be, where's my thing? Where's well, that catch? Can I get some extra ketchup? The ketchup's always full too. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean, like. That had to make good cocoa. Called the side work. Well, he married a regular lady. Is he in the paparazzi? Does he does the paparazzi follow him? Yeah. No, because they don't want him to. Oh. He don't want him to. No profile. She shot people are so ridiculous. And even that fucking what's that horse face? Uh, uh, Jessica Roberts or uh, Julia Roberts? Julia Roberts. <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked me. Julia you know, Roberts. Hey. Julia Roberts. Uh, she married. A, she she dated that. She dated that country singer. Lyle Lovett. Yeah, Lyle Lovett. She didn't. 
And then uh, then she then then she then she married a regular dude, a guy she just met on the set. You're like, like hey, a grip or something, like yeah, a, a grip, a marry a grip because they're good. Marry a grip because they've got a good grip. Yeah, marry your clit. Marry, yeah. no, marry an agent at CAA that has a lot of muscle. No, you don't marry. You, you marry an agent. That's not a bad move. A lot of comics are married. Married. A lot of male comics have married female agents. That works out because. They, you know they're gonna work when you stop working. They'll they'll continue to work, Absolutely. and they'll maybe they'll throw you a bone, like uh like uh 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 Dana Gould. He married like somebody who was like the head of at UTA, and then she swap move. He's she became the head of HBO, and then they got divorced anyway. They they adopted like six kids, and then oh. uh but anyway, it was still a good move. It was still a good move. How much did she help you? Marry somebody. You married somebody in a business, and but he was working anyway. He's not now. I always like it when um, very uh, successful Jewish comedians or producers marry really hot blonde girls and then just turn them Jewish, like Judd Apatow or uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, they or, make them. They make they, like, them convert. They make them convert, and then they do. They don't, yeah, they like it's, it's a, a whole thing. It happens to Jew and Adam Sandler. <laughs> oh, you know, fucking Adam Sandler made them convert. Oh, yeah, of course, they never marry Jewish girls. They marry like really hot chickses that they could never get in high school, yeah. <laughs> and then they fucking bring them and then they convert them. Like, you know, like a family. They like make vampires. them join the cult. Yeah, like right. This is no cult. What are you talking yeah, you about? Know, fucking just... cult, Mike. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna, if you're gonna turn over a new leaf and talk tough, you gotta go against the Jews. No, number one. They're my ally. Like initiation. You what, yeah. you're afraid of the Jews? Yes. The hot, the hot, the high holidays. Holidays are over, yep. aren't they, Ali? They are. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not afraid of them. I like them. We got people. a Jew right in the building, and we do. We Anna let Tova. Sit there. Tova. Honestly. Yeah, watch it. We're chosen, so that's right. Back it. off a don't mess bit. with them oh, because had a few bad breaks along the way. Yeah, don't Don mess with the Egyptians or motherfuckers. Don Rickles said. <laughs> Don Rickles. Don't mess with. We're the chosen people. We've had a few bad breaks. Don't mess with the Jews. They, they buried Pharaoh that prick five thousand years ago. Pharaoh. Mike, Mike, first of all, you just got to be what you are. You're a big, lovable guy. So well, I don't you, like when people go after you on Twitter though and moron. Facebook. Thanks for sticking up for me. I, I like, stood up. I stood up for you because it's it's a guy called you like you know whatever. Whatever you call him, he's a fucking douchebag. Yeah, it's a cheap shot. She dropped yeah. that in the middle of the night someplace. Yeah, that's what I said. I said I hope he dies in a fire. I hope that's not too personal. Uh, fire's I don't even too know bad. the guy because that's that's my number one fear: dying in a fire. Ugh. Yeah, but Mike, uh, well, you already did. <laughs> We had a fire like, in my house. Grammar. What's with your grammar, though, when you tweet and Facebook? Like, I talk from the like heart, Kevin. I'm not a great speller. Huh? Like, like, correct it, though? Like, you autocorrect? Well, it's supposed to. <laughs> you disable it? Are you are you anti you anti punctuation? Yes. You're anti. I speak from the heart because period. you know what? Have so you to can't give... even stop to put a period in there. No, it's too passionate. No, it's too, too, too much time. <laughs> You're right though, Kevin. Too much. Had too passions right because I write from the heart. I'm not some fake douchebag. Yeah. So you think uh, you're saying I'm fake because I use a no. comma from time to time? <laughs> no, no, no. I see you're trying to say I threw my yeah. medium hot coffee in your face. You're as real as a fucking hand grenade. No, I just, cause <laughs> I think people think that you're like, uh, that. Yeah, they think, fuck them. I don't give a shit. Yeah, so you. What kind of tweeting do you do where it's such bad? Is it misspelling or is it just like Prob syntax? A mixture of both, you know. Oh, it's probably. really horrible. Oh, really? You just really have to like, I have to like get the kids out of the house. It, just it, <laughs> it's no, ancient hieroglyphics. You really need total concentration. It's close to ancient hieroglyphics. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's probably genius, really. How'd you do in school? Not great, right? I got picked on by all douchebags. No, but they, no, no, I'm not talking about that bullying. I'm talking about the uh, how'd you do in school? Oh, my best subjects were, were history, and okay. believe it or not, I did great with English lit. Okay. But you know why? Not with spelling and punctuation, but how I wrote. My teacher told me that. He said I had a great depth. Like in e comics, right? No commas, no all lowercase. No, but he said, but case. he said I had great depth and imagination, which is more right. important than anything. Well, grammar is more like math than than really writing. I mean, math is, I'm horrible at math exactly. too. So if you're not good at the syntax is, of, is yeah. it? It's like an algorithm. You know what I mean? You've got to know where a comma goes. You've got to know where tense goes. Oh yeah, I'm syntax, horrible. So did you go to college, Mike? I hated I hated school to begin with. So Where'd I you go to school? Happy. Where'd you college? I didn't. Yeah. I never went though. Okay. I should have. I wish I would have because yeah, see, right now. When, I didn't graduate college either. I should have, right? No, but when you know, I thought about it the other day. You you can you can you have multitask taskable skills. I can I can jerk you, off. No, but if you want channel, to I thought a perfect. If you if you hadn't been a comedian and write, I do a perfect two jobs. I think you've been perfect for. Okay. And I said this once about you, ready. An attorney, a, a lawyer. Yeah, I would be a good lawyer. Well, you've been a great lawyer. I get thrown out of court a lot. Yeah, I would say a lot of times this court is out of order. Yeah, the whole system's out of order. Yeah. Or a librarian. Right, exactly. Huh? Or a librarian. I librarian. You know why you would have been a great you mean librarian? Yeah, yes, librarian. Oh, Sorry, you, you would have been great because you know why you'd have been a fucking Nazi. The books like, listen, douchebag, that book is eight years old. We do. 
But we'll work Again, on this. I got to return a book today, but uh, <laughs> my kids' books. But you're right. I like order. I got into a huge fight with my wife the other day because. Oh boy. Anyway, uh, you have a beautiful wife and children. God bless. It don't you. matter. It don't matter. Who cares? I thought it was a plush. No, it don't matter what because you about? because it's like after a while you don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, I when I started when when I in 1990 I started dating like this this uh, the waitress at the at the improv. Mm -hmm. She was fucking like exquisite looking, and then like within a year I'm like somebody kill me, somebody murder me with a gun. I you know what I mean? It's line like line is somewhere somebody uh, is sick of that. That's the line. Right, but yeah. the no, point no, is true. the point is it's like too it's like too much, and then if if there's it just it's and then you add kids in it. Right. It just it it adds an ingredient that people that I personally can't handle. It don't matter what she looks like. I see my wife sometimes. I go, oh, she looks good, you know. And then, but who cares? Because it's like I came home the other night and the place was a mess. And I'm like, what the fuck? If they well, do, I'm like, what the fuck? Have... I gotta come home. I gotta. I, my wife don't like the shop. She don't like the food shop. So I gotta. I gotta walk around the city like some bitch. Uh -huh. <laughs> some bitch shopping at for fucking fruits and vegetables after my set. I'm walking oh. to the path train. With two bags of groceries, you know how hard it's pick. You know how hard it is to pick up bitches with two bags of groceries that no, late. It's impossible. So I come home, you know, and, and <laughs> the place is a mess, and I'm like, what? The, I go, what the? F like, I, she was asleep, but right. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? Well, she's like, she can't keep the place. She's not blind like you. Right. Like I could see if she's blind. I go, you forgot to pick up the the fucking the the the, the have, dirty plate. Do you have help to clean? Do you have like clean, people to come clean? No, my wife's Hispanic. She's supposed to be the help. Oh, skill. God. <laughs> <She's just kidding. laughs> kind of Making good empanadas. So then she's like, but, you know, again, like I, my friend Coob, Officer Coob, he says his wife don't, does the same thing. They don't want to do housework because it's that's that's what their moms did. Oh, no. So, but I don't understand. Like, she's like So she wants to pick up the house? Like no, she, she says either? she does, but she don't. She don't. She, kids I, have chores? Uh, no. First of all, uh, uh, their chores to not wake me up on a weekend. But but it's when you chill. when you look at the in the refrigerator or in the in whatever, all the shit in the house I paid for. I bought it. Right. I she don't she don't food shop and she, well she's working now. But even when she don't work, she you know, so it's like I'm like you can't like I can't come home after uh -huh. I'm like a, like a bitch fucking buying pears and apples. Right. Did I you, can't come home in the house. I got to fucking clean up the house. You talked to her about this? No, I left a fucking nasty text. Well, That's how I do. Well, if you're a good friend of me, I'll go shop and I'll meet you at the pear train. <laughs> uh, you two queens <laughs> running around New Jersey. No, I'll go shopping from and, and, and just go. I'll go to I'll no, go you're to not food married, bar. so shut the fuck up. No disrespect, but I'm going to fucking I'm happy I'm not married. Let me tweet Brandon, you me. about that. Right. No, when you're not married... Listen, when you're not married, you don't have kids. It's all, when people, like, when I watch comics, like the younger comics, first of all, shout out to the young comics. You're all a bunch of bitches. You know, they're all like, oh, we got, the they, fight. They, 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 they're, they, it's a comedy boom right now. Louis C.K. is fucking doing theaters. Who, who would have thought that? He's arenas, man. Yeah, arenas. So it's, so they, they're like bitching. You got nothing to bitch about. You ain't got no wife. You ain't got no kids. Oh, I see guys tweet like, oh, my room service is like, you fucking piece of shit. Although, I'll show up with a gun. I'll shoot you. Yeah, like too soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, my mozzarella sticks are cold. Yeah, but are you fully Irish? You got a lot of hostility. Yeah, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go to therapy. A therapist called me back. I called like four therapists. They didn't. No, not, they don't even call me back. I, I think they hear it in my yeah, voice. It's, worse for me. it's not gonna take. It's not I no. think they hear it in my voice that I really have issues. You go back. Call me back. You fucking idiot. No, I didn't even. I kept it clean. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, and NC NC seventeen. I kept it. But no, I'm telling you, it's not going to work for you. It won't take. Don't even waste your time. It used to take, but it's not going to take now. I'm just going to go in and go like, Before you're going. wrong. I'll go, you're wrong. You're yeah, wrong. My friend said with the therapist, they have to be smarter than you. So then you've got to check your ego in order to like get the therapy. And that's just not going to happen. So no, like, there's not too many people smarter than you, Kev. Well, I don't know. About a lot that, of people are smarter than me, but maybe. I'm smart. But I, I don't like, as so my wife says, Godfather. I'm smart. Oh, I'm smart. <laughs> I'm, I'm the oldest. I know things. Never you know marry a WAP. Never marry a WAP. Is that what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was that? Godfather won. Uh, for, in one? Yeah. Yeah. Remember he takes a gun out and he like he drops his gun with his Oh god, his yeah. Father. He's like Bleh. He dropped it into the orange stand. I'm the oldest, I'm smart. He said that in one? Yeah, I remember the wedding, his, his like blonde hot wife is like dancing around and she's like she's all fucked up. She's like, never marry a wop. Oh, she, oh yeah, she was yeah. acting she up. She was they, cheating on him, right? Well she was like they were dirty dancing with the sister's like waspy boyfriend. 
And she said, never marry a wop. She was dancing around with him, and he oh, went yeah. to her off the dance floor, and she was like, fuck you. And then he's uh, she her was off drunk. by her hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm sorry, Michael, I can't control her. Then you've seen like five scary guys grab her, and Lord knows what happens. Right, yeah. after that. <laughs> the, the, the Blu ray director's cut it. Right. Coppola's only gangbang scenes. Good, right. It was all actual cum, too. Is that water over there or no? Is there anything there? <laughs> is it yours? You want a water? You have a water? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, water. I love Joe Pesci, though, in Casino, especially when he goes like this. I'm just stupid enough to crack your fucking skull open when I come out. I love that scene. Yeah, that's that's a good. It's it's like a fourth best. Yeah, but Mike, why don't you uh, why don't you uh, do you do you audition? You have an agent? Yeah, I had I actually auditioned recently for Kevin James's new show. I didn't get it, but it was it would have been cool. It worked out well. I had a good audition with him. I never got it. Who but did it? Donna DeSetta? No, um, downtown. What do you call it? Uh, downtown Julie Brown. No, Julie Tucker. Julie Tucker. I don't know her. That's she, cool. Good she, for you. Yeah, it was fun. I, oh, thanks. Well, that's for me. thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Really you want to be thanks, thanks, Ali. You want to be more yeah. of like an actor? Or yeah, absolutely. You know why? Because if you do well acting wise, tons of residuals. You don't have to put up with bullshit. No fucking people like, telling it's, you. It's like all you want to do is not put up with bullshit. But that's all life is is oh, bullshit. I know. It is. I couldn't even get a fucking. I couldn't even get my fucking tea at the fucking Dunkin' Donuts at, at Penn Station. Why? I know. There's like two. There's like a lady ahead of me, fat, which is which I should have just went to another one, but there wasn't one close by. Because if you're behind someone fat at Dunkin' Donuts, it's gonna be a while. Yeah, but I, I thought that Brendan and I know would have been like, "Move, you fucking slob! I want my no, I take." I, I did go a lot of gesturing like this. <laughs> they had she had she had such a big order. She had two people waiting on her. I'm like. I got to go to work. The thing is, if you got to go to work at one o'clock or two o'clock, nobody thinks that. Nobody thinks like you're in a hurry. If you if it's before nine o'clock, oh, everybody's yeah. in a hurry. Coming in for an afternoon munchkin. Yeah, if it's like. <laughs> <laughs> a euphemism. Well, this, yeah, could be. this is funny. You're fucking hilarious. Right, I like right, this. Thanks. All right. He's for the funniest blind guy I've ever I am met. Top four. Because no, a lot of blind guys, they're not funny because they don't have a sense of humor. Because uh, you know, no, they have a better blind. sense of spirit and humor than fucking they have a good other sense people of do. Spirit, spirit. Am I right or wrong? Go Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> if he was, first of all, I was gonna say, if everybody was blind, there would be less shootings because, right? They could see each other. Yeah, they wouldn't even know what to do. Oh, pew, pew. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So anyway, uh, clumsy, though. that would be mm. bad for me. I'm super. Clumsy. So anyway, so I, I try to get I try to get a coffee, you know, and it's like there's two uh, people waiting on this one lady. And I'm like, I go, I got to go to work. But it's like so I thought one was training and it, but it's always like something. So I'm saying it's just it, all there is is bullshit. So that's what I'm saying about these younger comics. They complain, but they ain't got nothing to complain about uh, about their girlfriend. They're disposable. You could get a new girlfriend in Manhattan in 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yep. You got game. Yeah, but you know what, though? You're complaining Wait, about waiting. You don't have to have game. Now with online, you just go You go to your phone. Yeah, Within 20 minutes, so some I... bitch be sucking your cock. Yeah. Yeah, but look how far slow they're moving. Balls. Look how slow they're moving other parts of the country. You're complaining about here. Right. I went to New Mexico. You waited, I waited 40 fucking minutes out of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really? Where? In, in like Lord, Lordsburg, in... New Mexico. I think Where are you in New Mexico getting chicken? Shot, in a, shot a film. Oh, uh, What is the name of the film? Can oh, we... Chooch. I played like this mafia type guy. It was fun. Can we name it? Huge. No, because Jessica, who I don't even like anymore. Oh, said, why? He's just a big. F anyway, uh, he loves you though. I think. No, not anymore. <laughs> People love you more than you I think. I can go from this to that very quickly. No, I I burn bridges. That's not even my show. No, I burn bridges because I I'm like I'm like Sinatra. You know when Sinatra said, "If you fuck with Sinatra once, but people he wouldn't talk to you ever again." That's how I am. People... So I'll probably run into him at the comedy cellar and all's forgiven. People bought... Speaking of all's forgiven, uh, ne my brother Neil is at. Uh, Gramercy, Gramercy Theater. Oh, nice. On on tomorrow with a uh, with a uh, Whitney Cummings. I guess she's releasing some book or whatever. So if you want to go there and pick it, uh, I recommend I recommend that. Somebody asked. Meet, I want some signs of people picketing like. <laughs> Going, meet your nephew. Meet your oh, no. nephew. Meet your <laughs> oh, no. nephew. Is you with the big mustache, big fake mustache. Yeah, I'll give anybody ten dollars if if I if you can do an Instagram or or a Facebook live. Yeah, I'll, have it. I, I'll, I'll help you. Huh? I never met. Somebody asked me the other day about that about him. I never met you, bro. I don't know him. And somebody. Yeah. Like, so it's a. <laughs> it's over. Anyway, uh, so uh, on, is it a stand-up? Is it a set? Is it a show? No, I think they're gonna have a chat, like a couple of gals, like a oh, couple yeah. of gals talking. People Neil is that. Neil is such a lazy fuck that he'll just attach himself to any right. celebrity because it's just easier. 
Yeah. I mean, look at me. Look, look at what. Look at my fucking. Look who I pick. We're quite the, we're, Mike we're, Bush, Addy. We we'll picked and fucking and, and yeah. Blind Brian. We're quite, so, the, we're quite the rat pack. In, look in conversation with Neil Brennan. Wow, that's gonna be a real snoozer because I've had some conversation with Neil. It gets real slow, real quick. So, what is John Legend's pool like, Neil? Anyway, so uh, she, it? and she was at the cellar the other night, and uh, you know what? If you look at, when I saw her, I thought I thought it was Neil. Cause they both look very thin, right? And the hair pulled back. She looked, <laughs> she looked like a masculine Neil. She looked good. No, she looks on. She looks too thin. You know, yeah, right? She's probably a vegan. Cause you got to be a vegan if you yeah. you won't get a Netflix special unless you get a, unless you're a vegan. <laughs> food That's the, they have simple rules: no meat and no cash. <laughs> Nobody pays cash anymore. I feel like no. a fucking drug addict every time I pay cash. Can't even buy food on a plane with cash now. No, right. Well, that that makes sense. You don't want to fucking. They the wait says you you know you they they got enough shit to do. They just give you food, right? Who? Oh, you guys talk about coach. Oh yeah, Ooh, gross. Anyway, uh, I wish I had first class. Uh, I'd be flying like crazy. It's fine. No, I go to pay cash, and there was, first of all, I go I, I go to pay at this place the other day. They go debit or credit. I got a twenty dollar bill in my hand. I'm like, what does it look like, sweetie? Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson. And I gave her I gave her the, the thing was like twenty thirty seven. So I get I mean it was like seven thirty seven. That was the total. Right. So I give her twenty thirty seven. Then she gives me cha change back for twenty. I go, no, I gave you I gave you exact change so I wouldn't get change back. She goes, you did? I go, yeah. You think you think I'm scamming you for thirty seven cents? <laughs> you fucking cunt. You know, if you did that like forty times a day though, after a couple of weeks, you'd, be oh, doing you'd all get right. over. You'd be you'd be you'd get over. No, but it's a big headache because then they look at you like you're the, like you're the creep yeah, because you have cash. Nobody has cash. Nobody goes to the bank. I go to the bank. I deposit cash in a bank because at the at the comedy sweller, I'm not going to use their real name. At the oh. comedy sweller, they pay cash, and I get a deposit it because, you know, if I'm if I'm going for change and then I have like six one hundred dollar bills in my pocket. Wow. I, I did the a, a stress factory, right? You want to hear this story? Yep. Please. So I'm getting I'm getting the uh, train back at New Brunswick. Anyway, the cash they don't they're not accepting cash on the uh, on the what you call it. When you because the, the station's closed, so you got to okay, okay. you got to do the machine, but they're not accepting cash, and they're and everyone's like, oh, because at that point time of day, everybody has cash. It's like ten thirty at night. They're all drug dealers and fucking pimps and shit, right. so nobody's paying. <laughs> so I realized the 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 guy on the on the train is gonna believe me, you know, because if I say it's because usually they have a surcharge if you if you pay. On oh the yeah, train. yeah. So anyway, so I, I so the guy I t the guy goes, where's your ticket? I go, well, it didn't I didn't buy it because it wasn't accepting cash. So he kind of, you know, he right away he was like, oh yeah, you're right. Anyway, so then I take out my money to pay him. I got like six one hundred dollar bills on me, and oh. I'm going through the fucking money to pay him the nine fifty. Right. And then who's across the aisle from me? Two young black dudes. No problem. No, it was a problem because right. then, then, then they're looking at me weird. Then, I, then, and I'm like, so like then I had to, I had to switch cars. I got real panicky because yeah, I'm not even panicky. worried about the money. I don't want to get shot. I don't even care if I get shot. I don't want to get shot by a young black dude. You know what I mean? I don't want to be a fucking stereotype of their stereotype. <laughs> I don't okay. think that you look either like a serial killer or an off-duty cop. Oh no, he does. About to he be does that look. off the force. Yeah, but why would I have all these hundreds on me? Okay, I don't know. I, then my, don't my, know. Wife goes, my wife goes. My wife goes. I. She goes. There's an app for that. There's an app for that to, to buy your ticket on your phone. There's an app. I go, there's probably an app for a new wife. There's a, uh, at the how, about, how am I looking at that? You know, I don't mean a name drop, but at the Helen Keller Institute, they can teach you how to fold your money. <laughs> you, uh, no, it's a five, or a 10 or a 20. Fold your money. So, the, so five, five looks like a diamond, a 10 looks like uh, rectangles, it. and a 20 looks like, and you, so, so that when you, the money's in your pocket, because I can't see denominations of cash. So like, I never know what I'm, what's in my pocket necessarily. So they show you how to fold it so you know what it is. Or you can just kill yourself. So, um, <laughs> so, so those, those are the two options I tell you at the Institute. Said, like, listen, we have this or that. Fold it or kill yourself. Or kill yourself. Or just <laughs> ask random guys. He gives, I just met him. He goes, can you, can you uh, uh, put in my, my passcode at, at the ATM? Yeah, so I could have just I could have been like, hey, how's it? Nice meeting you. I have his card. I guess he, you know, it would take a while to shut down your card, right? I could probably get a couple of hundred bucks. Oh, easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, yeah, but you're not a, you're not a fucking idiot. No, I wouldn't. I mean, I mean every, no, like, but I saw he, he, we were at the comic strip the other night. He has just a random dude who works there. Oh, really? I don't care. What's he going to do? Take my card and. I, what, yes. I also have one card. I have six credit cards and I have one card that only has like a couple of grand limit on it. Yeah. And, that and that's the one is, you use. My cash card. I so. still don't understand how you, you, you fold the money. You can feel it. It has you fold it, so you know, a it? diamond is a five. And a, a rectangle is a 20 and a square. You have to show me after. It's I like can't. origami. 
I can't figure it out. Well, I have my money in order because I used to work in a gas station when I was young. The big bills in the back and the okay. small ones That's in the front. That's how you should always do it anyway. Didn't you see your wife? Well, I do that. I do I do the small bills. But when I went to get when I went to pay $9, I, I got to the big bills. And then I realized these guys are probably looking at me, you know. Right. So I learned my lesson. Don't fucking. Is it safe to say you got spooked? <laughs> it is safe. <laughs> oh, no. That's a, that's a, that's a good term. To that. <laughs> it's old school. Yeah, right. I um, can't even say it anymore. He, he just did. But Happy you Halloween. Know. You really spooked no, me. Yeah, but you just did say it because you know what? All the, all, all the fucking Nimrod goddamn. You call it? I was going to, you know, when the uh, Ghostbusters came out? Yeah, the one with the women? Gonna, yeah, I was going to tweet, uh, my kids aren't afraid of ghosts, but they're afraid of Leslie Jones. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That would have been a fucking Twitter nightmare. That would have been a, yeah, yeah. Because that guy, that guy uh, uh, Milo, he, did, he didn't even do something that offensive, though, right? Milo. Milo, that that alt right guy with the the gay alt right guy with the blonde hair. Oh, did he have a fight with somebody? Milo Yakamakamas. What's his name, Allie? I think he had a fight with somebody. Milo like Yiannopoulos. Really Has he okay. been on the show? Yeah. He was on Anthony. Yeah, after the quote unquote scandal. He's gay and alt right. Yeah, he's very mixed up. Anyway. Log cabin Republican. No, he's, <laughs> he's, he's controversial. I mean, he goes to, I, 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 I'm he's going to go to Berkeley, and they they he had to cancel his performance. He's friends with Ann Coulter. They're all okay. they're all like a they're all like a kind of a spooky kind of a fucking you know you don't know what the they just go once right. a guy says he's gay and all right I just go okay I'm going to leave you alone because you know what I mean. What does alt right even mean? I don't know. We don't. I don't want to talk about okay, that. I don't want to talk about it either. Anyway, did you say your wife ruined your credit? Yeah, she did. How'd she do that? Buying uh, plantains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, them in bulk. I know. Buys <laughs> them in bulk. Of them everywhere. Yeah, but oh, no, it's slow and it's empanadas. Slow and insidious. I was just gonna say insidious. It's slow and insidious. Uh, you can't. You don't see. It. It's like a. It's like nothing. It's like killer bees. Remember? Remember killer bees were supposed to cross. Uh, oh yeah. The, the Tex Texaco border. Yeah. Texaco border. And right. kill us all. But oh, they never yeah. showed up. But 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 bland, brown people do ruin your credit. I I, I just speak of my wife. My wife was paying thirty five percent in her in her credit card when I met her. Whoa. Well, after we got married. So I didn't know all this. I knew she was she didn't have a lot of money, but but she had a nice ass, so I fell for it. And then uh and then and then one time she was like she was paying her credit card. She always paid online, you know. Like I'm not asking how much No 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 no. She was paying online. So so she so somehow it came up she was paying thirty five percent on her credit cards. I go, what? She goes, Well I missed a couple of payments. I go, yeah, that'll get you. Okay. Anyway, so then I said, well, I go, just get, get, him, get him delivered to your house. Because if, it, if, you're, if it's online, those numbers are not, they're, they're changeable. You know what I mean? So you want to get the numbers so you can see what they are and go like, okay, this is what they are. And when you call them, you go like, um, why am I paying 35%? So it's, it's just, but my wife was just like, everything's online. Everything's online. I know. You know what I mean? I pay, I, I, she don't pay shit. She doesn't deal with cash. If, like, the pizza guy comes, I go, you got a dollar? No. Who doesn't have a dollar, Mike? A lot of people don't know. It's all credit I, I cards. I never have cash. Shit, really. Uh, unless I ask a helpful stranger to take some. <laughs> uh, I once leased a Honda. You should always have some money. Yeah. And like I've said before, like, you know, women think, like, oh, if I don't have cash, if somebody robs me, they're not going to get any money from it. But they may rape you or kill you. Oh, gonna They're going to get something. They're, it's like, let's make a deal. Shout out to Monty Hall. It's like, let's make a deal. Door number one, not door number two. Maybe God played, let's make a deal with Monty Hall. I once... Uh, 96, Mike. I mean, you might have to be 96. So, Monty, which behind door number one? I can't wait to see you at 96, Mike. <laughs> I hope I get that far. Yeah, well, how old are you now? I'm 40 years away from that. What? What? I'm not good at math. 56? Yes. Okay. 56? You look pretty good for 56. Nice head of hair. I mean, that's the only thing I have. Yeah, really. I mean, it's good. Take it. Yeah, I leased a car in 99, a Honda CRV, and then I couldn't afford the payments after about four months. So I just took it back to the Manhattan Honda dealership at 11th Avenue, and I was like, here you go. And they were like, what? I'm like, I'm like, I'm done. That fucked out my credit for years until I started making real money, and then I was able to straighten well, How much it was it that you couldn't pay it? It was like 500 bucks a month. You couldn't pay it? Well, I was living in Manhattan. I was getting all these parking tickets. I had, I had it because I had a job. Yeah. It was just, it just, the car was just... It was just too much, and so I, I just, and for four months, I was like, I'm going to just get this back. You yeah. can do that. You can just get things back, it, but that'll fuck up your credit. Real, I had to pay like 15000 Yeah, because they want to teach you a lesson. Yeah, I mean, it's valid. I mean, I, I reneged on uh, on the deal I made with Honda. Can we take phone calls, by the way, or is anybody even calling in? we have any phone calls? There was one person, but he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, all right. I called in. Should I call in? 
Let me go in the other room and call in. No, 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 no. All right, fair enough. No, people, sometimes people call in, and then last week was good because everybody called in. But, you know, Monday's rough because people are, you know, especially, uh, it's just, Monday's is a rough day. People are just busy, you know. Yeah, I got a bitchy on a Monday. I got super fucked up Friday and Saturday night. So, you did? Well, I had to officiate a wedding. Oh, yeah. Saturday night. I was, I, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, uh, it was a huge Irish wedding. And, uh, oh, no. <laughs> was, uh, yeah. I loved them, though. That's it was fun. an Aunt, Aunt Jane who, uh, who I, she thought I was sitting in her seat this, and she spilled a beer on me. I was, oh, fuck. It, was like, it was fine. It was a lot I of mean, fun. I mean, she thought you were sitting in her seat. I was at the family's table, but we didn't have assigned seating. We just had a assigned oh. table. Oh. She looked at me, and she's like. You bring your wife? Yeah, I brought my wife. Oh, did, she, why did, did your wife defend you? She was in the other room, but um, no, I, it all worked out. I just got up. I just, <laughs> have a sex of Fredo? <laughs> I never marry a oh, no. never marry a blind guy. Never marry a guy who's gonna go blind. Never, he's fucking she, everybody. <laughs> I thought you were my husband. Doing her own gang bang. Yeah, why not? Hey, yeah. he don't know what's going on. He's drunk yeah. and blind. <laughs> drunk and, and he keeps going to the bathroom again and again. Because <laughs> he likes some booger sugar. All right. <laughs> so oh, no. too blow. Uh no no you did blow that night no not that night no I haven't no I haven't done cocaine in a little bit I mean not a little bit <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> no uh you know allegedly I may have partied a couple of years ago but it was just on a trip it's been years since you did blow well even if I did it last weekend I would admit to it anyway Why? so kind of what's the point not a cop. I, I know whatever well, you're embarrassed. Am I embarrassed? No, I'm not embarrassed. But... I, I meant to say embarrassed. I like how I go, I go, are you embarrassed? And you go, no, I'm not embarrassed. You're like, <laughs> sorry. It's not an acting it's exercise. A... You don't have to say the exact words back to me. Sorry, I'm a librarian. <laughs> <It's> my librarian <laughs> instincts. No, you should have been, you would have been perfect. They would have loved you in the New York Public Library. You would have probably owned the place. I would tell everybody to shut the fuck up. Right. I would just say shut the fuck all the time. People are so obnoxious. It's like people people think like their noise don't affect nobody. Yeah, but you would have called I have, somebody. I do have a oh, I do have a noise thing. You would, would have called somebody out though. I'm sure the library. You would have been like, excuse me, nitwit. You would have had it over a loudspeaker. I would actually. Uh, you have fucking eighty five dollars in this book. I would actually. You don't see a lot of fights in a library. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was there, no, I just get. It's like if it's supposed to be quiet. There was. I was on a train the other day going to the stress factory. Shout out to the people that went to the stress factory Absolutely. show. Thank you for coming out. It was a good crowd and it's a great uh, room. I love that place. And then, uh, and then one. I I forget the guy's name, but he's on Twitter. He's blocked. He has a private account on Twitter. I asked him. Mean? I go, why do you have a private? I go, why do you have a private account? He goes, well, I'm looking. I'm trying to get a job. He's tr trying to get a new job or whatever, so he wants to not get into trouble. It's a private account. You can just have make it private. Oh, yeah. You, just, you can see, Nobody can read your... You can see... The, the, yeah, they can't read. retweet what you say. Oh, they okay. can't. Just It's just whatever. I had it that for a while. I loved it. Okay. You did? So then I, I went to... Uh, I went to... Um, you know, I did the show, and then I was like, go into the back to get T-shirts. I brought some T-shirts in case people want to buy it. So sure, goes, of course. He goes, you have T-shirts? And he was a black dude, you know? Sure. So I thought he was going to, like, um, get mad. <laughs> Why? Because there weren't a lot of black people in the audience, and a lot of times, if there's not a lot of black people, sometimes I get offended because I I'm too glib, you know. Right. Like, I'm not glib in a good way. I'm you glib. Went... No, I say things because it's like you know I say my wife's blackish, so I'll make jokes. Is it bits or crowd work? Huh? Is it bits or crowd work? Well, I don't say anything disrespectful, but I think sometimes they think they think I don't know they're there. Okay. And then and then they think I'm just talking like that because I know, but I know they're there. I know it's in the audience before I go up. So. Right. So then, uh, so I thought he's gonna grab me and go, but he goes, oh, I want. He he grabbed me as I was walking by. He goes, I want to get a T-shirt. I go, oh yeah. So then he's he's turns out to be a fan, and then um, and then another guy. Um, oh nice. Then another guy was uh, he's a Jersey City uh, firefighter, and uh, he was gonna buy a T-shirt, but he didn't have any money. I, I guess I should have gave him one for free, but fuck him. No, no, no. Anyway. <laughs> No, I, I can't be. I can't be too nice. You know no, what I mean? You got to be he a said, son he of a bitch. He said he could take like my kids on the. Uh, he said he could take my kids like to the fire station, or we could go to his, you know, fire station, or right. he could set up the one near my house. Ooh. So definitely, uh, he didn't. He didn't contact. I told him to contact me on Facebook. So contact me on Facebook. Yep. I think his name was uh, Mike, but anyway, he was a nice guy. <laughs> oh, no, again, he didn't have cash because he goes, I, I don't, there's no way. little square thing for your phone. I know, that's my bad. He goes, he goes, uh, if I was going, the next time I go out of town, like when I go to Philly uh, the first week, uh, November 2nd, 3rd, 4th, I'll need it for them because I'll get a bunch of T-shirts. And and it, they say it's easy if you get it on your phone, just a swipe. Yeah, it's a little square yeah, app people thing. People don't, they don't have cash. So right. they, they want, you want them to, you know, spend well, 20 bucks, you know. I, I come with you. We'll get separate hotel rooms. And we can run the swag table, and then we'll go strip clubbing. You, need an hey, you should run. <laughs> That'd be funny if you were the you ran my swag and uh, you were be, blind. Yeah, just gonna stand there. 
Right. You go, you, everyone's like, well, you gave me the wrong chain. <laughs> it feels, it feels any, like a medium. If anybody messes with you, <laughs> if anybody messes with you, bring an extra chain, I'll smash that exactly, thing. You're, like, right. you're like, you be my seeing eye Italian guy. <laughs> you're like, is this a medium? You're like, let me fold it over like the $5 bill. <laughs> is it the shape of a diamond or a they square? Told me at the clin- <laughs> they told me at the clinic. Uh-huh. <laughs> Helen Keller, how'd she ever figure everything out? It's amazing. It's an amazing it story. Amazing. I mean, it really is. A, I, especially Most be- people give up, right? She was the one that didn't give up, she right? She was blind and deaf. Yeah, she was like, like Tommy out of The Who, right? Deaf, dumb, and blind boy. That- I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but especially in those days as well. Everything was like it was 1880 something. Yeah, they, they didn't even have butter. <laughs> oh, yeah. They didn't have butter. <laughs> Mm. So she just never gave up, and then she could. Well, eventually... the miracle work. You've seen the Anne Bancroft movie, oh, right? Now watch. The woman shows up and like How much of a downer. Taught her the alphabet in her hand, and then taught her sign language, and from there and she could eventually talk. She took her a speaking tour, like Young Frankenstein. Remember that? Put on the ring. Wait, so she could she could talk? <laughs> eventually, <laughs> yeah, she was able to form words, but. You know, she was able to like talk without any sound memory. Yeah, exactly. It was all in her hand. It was all like Whoa. that. Remember, water, water. No. Water Gunga Din. P- Patty Duke played her in the movie. That's very good. You're so right. young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't watch that movie. Anne Bancroft. And then the Nazis found her. No, it was Anne Frank. Oh, I'm <laughs> <getting mixed up. laughs> but, yeah, I too. Yeah, <laughs> the miracle worker. Like, so what happened with Anne Frank? We look like, we look like the, the, the Outlet Mall version of the Blues Brothers. <laughs> what, happened, what happened to Anne Frank? And Frank, well, they caught her in like 1944. The Nazis yeah. got her. I think the, didn't the neighbors uh, like rat her out or something? I and thought. Then they found her diary. So yeah. Eventually, she got killed. She died. Yeah, killed. She went to concentration yeah. camp. She probably died. I think she died in the concentration I, camp. I, I, yes. She wrote a diary, and they found her diary. They found the diary. I, they so meaning someone, the, someone snitched her out. The, yeah, yeah. The Some Allies found her diary, and then, then of course, seven years later, Justin Bieber signs the guest book and says she would have been a believer. Really? Yeah. Didn't you hear that story? Oh. Yeah, asshole. My kids went to their first concert last night. They went to see Ed Sheeran. Oh, her how's he terrible? Uh, I, I didn't go, but they, they had a Sky Suite. I heard Lenny's his opening act. <laughs> right? Oh, no. I'm here yeah. to fix the printer. That's how gay he is. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty gay. <laughs> oh, isn't he gay? Isn't he a singer songwriter? No, no, he's got a. Isn't he a very. Isn't he like a sensitive singer songwriter? Yeah, right? In this gay. day and age, that's, that's just too much. And the Jason Blau- Everyone's so PC anyway, where he's like, the girls are all like, eh. And you know he's a fucking asshole. You know he's doing it to get pussy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's definitely good. It's like that, uh, that, he- that, that John Mayer. I mean, John Mayer yeah, was like a crazy pussy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust any of any of these guys. Like these guys are like uh, ultra feminist. Like that fucking uh, what was that guy's name? What's that guy's name? that got busted. He was the, he was the ultra feminist. The, are we talking about the gay alt right guy? The Jewish I... name? Uh, Israel Rabinowitz. What did he do? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Oh, he was gay. <laughs> his girlfriend. They had a they had a show, and then his girlfriend outed him. Uh, about what? They were married. Fuck. Real Jewy name. Oh fucking! <laughs> Is this the girl that got raped by Kurt Metzger? No, I'm thinking of wrong. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no. allegedly. Fuck. Just kidding. Anyway, uh, this guy was an ultra feminist, and then it turns out he was he was doing it to get pussy. He was like he was sexually harassing people and everything. So right. well, it's it's the root of kind of most decisions. So you gotta you gotta be suspicious of anybody who's like women really want to f- you know women women if the well, guy's like, ultras. Like when he's dreamy, Jackson Brown, he used to beat up all his, he used to beat up fucking, uh, oh, Daryl right. Hammond, Daryl Hammond. Hammond. Daryl Hammond. <laughs> Hammond was hot. Why you Trump the anymore? fucking guy's name? Holy shit. These are, na- these names are hard. The guys in there help with, get, like, you, yeah, they're amazing. Like they're amazing. Right. Well, you're not getting much to work with right now. Daryl Hanner, I thought you were thinking about. I him. am. It was, that was the joke. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Time delay. It's not a, not a seven second delay. It's more like a fourteen second delay. Oh, it is. My brain works a little uh, different than everybody else's. He's f- ready. It was Daryl Hannah. I have major OCD, so that Daryl Hammond. That, uh, Daryl Hammond. How's he doing? I hey, love that. Did you guys see the thing? Did you guys see the thing? Uh, the people, uh, the the karma. I don't know if you guys can go to my Twitter or my Facebook. I posted something where some some people shot a like a lion. And oh, they were no. like they were like taking a picture with a dead lion, and then another lion attacked them. And they eat them? Huh? And the, and then the last, the guy's last word were, "Oh fuck!" Oh really? Good, that douchebag. Yeah, so they're they're all they're sh- they're shoot they they set up the timer. They took a picture with the dead lion on the on the side of the road, and then uh, and then and then all this, right here, right here. Look. Are you gonna work on this? Oh come on! <laughs> right. I mean, it. Yeah, well. <laughs> right, I'll just check the camera, yeah. Okay. Mm. It's right. South African sounds like. Okay, yeah. good stuff. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> 
that real? See? Yeah. Yes, it is real. That fucking lion fucking ripped them in pieces. It's on some, some, uh, it's, it's on some website. I found. It. I just retweeted it, and then I just. No, but uh, did you watch this? Mo- did karma something? You could go on my Facebook or my Twitter. Did you watch this multiple times? <laughs> yeah. No, because when you first see, you go like, "Holy shit." And then you watch it again. You're like, and then then you just want to watch it like in slow motion. No, it's because it, it, then you go, is it real? But then it's got to be real. It has to be real. Look at that but lion ran and jumped at him. Uh, it's just too real for it to be, you know, photoshopped or whatever. So they have like those weird South African accents, like e, she put the lion. Yeah, and it's like normally you wouldn't normally you wouldn't want people killed like that, but these yeah. people you do. Yeah. Is there like the there's the kind of people who, who brag to their friends like. We're, we're wild game right. hunters. And plus, with the accent, you want everybody with that accent oh, to horrible. be fucking murdered. You know it's what I mean? 38 kilometers. You sort of keep 10. Yeah, be right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where are they from? Like New Guinea or some fucking savage country over yeah, there? Yeah, well, they're, they, you know, no, they're probably, yeah, they know. The Africans are weird. They're probably, uh, I oh, mean, yeah. anybody, wants to yeah. ki- anybody who wants to kill a lion and brags about it is probably a cunt anyway. Don't Trump's kids have pictures of them with yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't like them. I don't lines. like them. Yeah, but at least right. someone like Daniel Boone, if he killed a lion, he was going to use him for food. He was going to, you know what I mean? And he was a badass. Like he goes back. To see. Daniel Boone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know if Daniel Boone's a real. Is he real? No, he's a real. When Lions roam Tennessee. Oh, Tom Sawyer, is he real? <laughs> uh, Pecos Bill might have been fake. I'm not sure. Let's <laughs> never forget his friend, that Jim. <laughs> No, I love that. I've been watching that. I've been I've been binge watching Daniel Boone lately on 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 on, on the internet. What is, what is it? A TV show? Yeah, it was like 50s. Daniel Boone was I a went man. Open a comedy club it. called Daniel Boone. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, well, Daniel Boone. Where'd you get that name? Who cares? No, where'd, you, where'd you get any name? He was a badass though. Hey, Somebody, you, Yuck Yucks was taken. He said an urban night you could have a coonskin cap night. Yeah. Brian loves to say the N word. He's, he's love to say I love the cool. I'd buy a coonskin cap. Cap. <laughs> cap. Listen to that. I'd be lying if it didn't like a coonskin cap. All right. Nice. Thank you. Hey, was it Jamie Kilstein? Yes. Good work, well fellas. Yeah. Jamie Kilstein. It was a caller. Yeah. Oh. Oh, good. What, what, did he hung up? <laughs> yeah, he just said a, the name and left. It was a drive-by <laughs> caller? <laughs> nope. Nobody wants Amy to... Kilstein, got to go. <laughs> what <are> he, yeah, <laughs> you know? No, he I'm was in like, I was, I was in, uh, I was in um, uh, where was I? I was in Australia in like 2000, wow. like 10 years ago, whatever. So Jamie Kilstein's there. He's like oh, this hot, people, like, people are talking about him. And then he's like, "Yeah, I'm a fan of yours, you know, whatever. Who isn't?" Anyway, so then, uh, <laughs> then, uh, Stankos loves you. Anyway, so this guy look all tatted up like a tough guy, and then I saw him walking around. You know, he's got a he's got a kind of a not attractive girlfriend with him, you know, and blah. But he's a, like ultra feminist. Long story short, and then then it's like all this, you know, he does a set on Conan and. That, the set on Conan I saw was like, it was the worst comedy set I ever saw. I forget exactly what, I think he was like talking about the war. Okay. Or whatever. The, it was like, the, you know, Iraq war was still going on or it was Afghanistan, whatever. No, it's not comedy, you know. Is he American? Yeah. Is there a good set on Conan? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Shout out Brett so, Jackman. So then, uh, <laughs> oh, so then, uh, so then he gets, anyway, then he marries, you know, he marries a woman and then they do a show together. Then they get oh, divorced. Yeah. Then they get divorced. And but they're still working together. They're still doing like a radio show. I think they have like a radio network going. And then uh, then she she starts she busts him because I guess she heard uh, at the job that people were com- maybe people were complaining to her. Women were complaining to her that the radio he station was sexually like- yeah he was sexually harassing. So basically she tweeted she she added him in a tweet or whatever in a Facebook post that he's a creep. Right. So it's like, yeah, you got it. You anybody who, like any cult leader, any any anybody who's like, oh, because it's not natural to be an ultra feminist. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? That, that hot yoga guy, the little Indian guy, he's really, uh, he's apparently like he's fucking all the, you know, he has like a real cult of like. Because yeah, women slaves. are so dumb, they're so dumb yeah. that they'll trust the guy. Let's go with guy, this for a while. They'll trust the guy. <laughs> They'll trust the guy that that he's like, oh my god, he's yeah. So a guy becomes an ultra feminist to get pussy. He's not a good looking guy. Right. So one way to get pussy is be like a you know, like a you know ultra feminist sympathizer, and then, <laughs> then women will fuck you. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a guy who's got a lot of game, like a like a charming fucking yeah, Euro. But that trash game guy. is bullshit, really. No, but women fall for because they're dumb. They're dumb cunts, and they fall for it. And then they go, then they go, oh my god, the guys who turned out to be a creep. Yeah, what did you think he got the game for to get a lot of fucking dumb cunts like? you to fuck him and then he and like you know what i mean i got no game so i'm basically fucked i'm stuck with my wife because my wife dumps me because who, who's gonna fuck me then nobody mike go mike we'll have no, to i'm go. not saying you we, talk i'm saying well, mike might can, have to fuck me we can go for some oh, we, we yeah. can go from street hookers i know what they are still downtown 
I mean, where, where are there? Well, you you can't you can really fuck a hooker for so long. I'm saying, I'm saying these guys that minutes. I'm saying these guys get a lot of game, or or they 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 you're tempted to fuck him because he's like a singer songwriter, any of that bullshit. John Mayer shit. Stay away. Just get a guy who's a regular guy, right? Like like uh, Matt like, Damon did. Like Joe Paycheck. Yeah, jo not Joe Paycheck, but just a regular <laughs> guy. Get a guy who's just a regular guy. Right. Yeah, but your wife is not a, a, a civilian, right? I mean, she's not. A, I don't right? even trust my wife because oh. she was married before. I bring this up sometimes with her. I shouldn't really talk about this in disrespect. I'm so sorry. She was very sweet when I met her. Though. She's very she's nice. A sweet lady, but you know, uh, uh, she, I, she's married. She's been married before. So and you, you, have you ever married before or no? Your first time? Maybe. And then uh, she was married before, and uh, she was married twice. She was married to a white fella. So maybe. Wait, you're number three? Yeah, maybe I. No, I'm number two. No, hell, so. white, white. I mean, you're pretty white, white. To me. Yeah, this other guy was Italian. But the point is, the point is that maybe uh, I shouldn't have trusted that. Maybe she didn't, you know what I mean? Maybe she was out to ruin my credit all along. Yeah, it was her whole, yeah she hates white people. Yeah, she, she's like a, one of those <laughs> like a deep cover agents. You know oh, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe she's a little like, a, you know, like my own culture is not good enough for me. Yeah, I mean, I married, I married Dominican. dark because I got terrible, I got terrible skin. Dark people uh, attracted, I don't hide a, I like huh? dark women, actually. Yeah, I do, too. Plus, in New York, you see so many dark, beautiful women that, you know, it's not like we live in Minnesota where you see one and she looks like a fucking freak. I like women know? like I like my bread white. I like oh, my I like yeah, them the toasted. way I like my coffee, <laughs> sweet and brown. Yeah, but how white are you talking? Pilgrim Viking white, like those fucking. Yeah, my, oh, my wow. wife's family arrived in America in 1608. Wow, so, oh, she yeah. told you. We found it out. We did a thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, at the institute. Uh, at the institute. Yeah. <laughs> like she she tells you all this stuff now. Like we're gonna go to the institute and see where my Am family. At a pet store. Uh, yeah, no. See where my family. Yeah, but Aunt, her father is a seventh. Yeah, but Anne Sullivan had a lot of patience. Absolutely, with Helen, she had to right. Oh, we're back to that. Yeah, we're, I mean, have to be. Ann Sullivan is the miracle worker. We're, 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 we're looping back around now. Oh, we are? The Helen Keller stuff. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, just got, I got dizzy for a second. I want to hear about the hookers in downtown Manhattan. Loop. They're still out there. I can, I can try no, the to hookers, they, them down. Every, everything's online now. The hookers that you on the street. You'll wind up having your dick will fall off in the middle of the night. You, no, you don't you don't want to mess with that because they're, they're going to rob you, uh, if nothing else. They, well, they, they, they're they dirty and their pimps are dirty. What's that great Artie Lang joke? He's like, when they're out of the room, you just, yeah, make sure they're clapping <laughs> the whole time they, so you know they're not stealing. They're clapping. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, funny. But you, every time yeah, you, you know piss, you go, they, ah! No, you know what they do? They 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 bring a couple of gals, and then it's going to be like a threesome or yeah, they foursome. Dr they drug you. And then they drug you and rob you. Yeah. Whoa. You know what's a great hooker that's bar? The worst, that's the worst story the next day because you got to go to the popo, yeah. and you got to tell your credit card you got to tell your, like wife, your wife and, and you know and then your wife's like wait you got four hookers you know or whatever yeah we like i thought i was just cheating on you and i think there were hookers so can we back this up? <laughs> right, I'm not, I, mean, I thought i was just cheating oh yeah you're right that's your one alibi yeah. cuz you didn't cuz they robbed you yeah, after just partying. They, yeah we were yeah, having they, a good time yeah, but i'm lying a red bull you know you're an aureole you know okay yeah, but i'm i'm lying isn't it unless they're another expense i'm sure i don't well, you know what i mean like okay a, a like, cover. The, like the mandarin oriental hotel which is up in columbus circle that is notorious hooker bar they are they a sponsor of the show they go there. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking for, right if you want to meet a russian who's going to steal your kidneys let's take the a train well i could i could use some more well, here's kidneys. the thing here's the thing with alcohol alcohol will fuck up any oh god yeah situation so if you're drunk, it's so easy for them to give you something because you're already drunk. So you, if, even if you yeah. say that tastes funny, I've had gin and tonics. I've had one gin and tonic, and then the next one, they taste different, you know, because a different bartender made them or whatever. Right. So you don't know. If you go, oh, this one tastes funny, she goes, oh, I, maybe I put too much uh, tonic in. You know what I mean? Yeah, meanwhile, you're getting all woozy. The, and with the accent. <laughs> so right. even oh, just sorry. hanging around, even hang around strip clubs, I, get, I used to get, like, I never got so drunk that I didn't know what was going on because... You know, they always, they're always trying to trick you. Why do you have a Playmate cooler there? Ugh, yeah, but I always went to the sleazy, scummy strip clubs in New Jersey. Like and those are the most dangerous. Nice. They're the most dangerous. Remember the one in Staten Island? Oh, there's, there's a couple. There's still a couple now, right? Yeah, I bet they're Fame, bet. There was, there was, it was in a paper. The, the other, remember the, the, the guy, the cop, drove home? He got so drunk. Yeah, from the one on Third Avenue in Brooklyn. Yeah, he like. No, he was on. Oh, no, I thought boy. he was in Staten Island. No, he's Staten Island. And he's driving to New Jersey, and he went on the highway the wrong way. Whoa! And uh, um, so and then everybody died, and then and then so you know they instead of closing the strip club, they they changed the name. Yeah, but it wasn't dangerous. like in excess or like excess. I think they changed the excess. It wasn't dangerous because, you know why? Like, last exit. 
connected people <laughs> wasn't dangerous because not too soon enough no, but it wasn't dangerous because connected people own that place if anybody was a dick they'd be fucking taken out right in the place wait what are you what are you saying like a lot of strip clubs like that will run by you you know yeah, guys who like to play with guns yeah, you know a I mean? ghoul family right? yeah and the thing is if anybody was a dick they'd be burying them someplace for being a fucking yeah. but here's out. the thing here's the thing about strip clubs you're so at the mercy of them because like if you act up i've seen guys I've seen guys like what come dragged out of strip club with a bloody nose because oh yeah the bouncers the bouncers want to be lucky they had a bloody nose no, they, they, the bouncers are all pumped up and they want to look like a hero in front of these whores you know what oh I mean? yeah no you're right so, so if you disrespect one of them and then you know and then and she says oh he touched me inappropriately you know they can just beat the shit out of you there's no cameras in there you know and then no. he looks like a hero to the whore and then uh you, and then how do you explain it you like you you're outside you're half drunk you got a bloody nose you go you go home it's one thing to fucking come in your pants it's another thing to come home with a with a fucking bloody nose right how do you explain it to your wife mike you, you know what right. was even scarier than the strip clubs after hours clubs i don't know if you guys were the, Save the robots and red zone i remember the old i remember the old days yeah sure they were great where do you go to you go to after hours place by yourself that i know i'd go with a few people but it was like it was, Staten island yeah they live on staten America. island yeah, oh, that'd be fun. Let's do that. No, oh, that's got to be Years a million ago. laughs. No, what's, no. What's the after hours in Staten Island? Like 10 p.m.? No, no. Is that so, it? No, for, for, they close early. No, 5 a.m., like 6 in the morning, people drink. Is it just someone's house? No, it was like a regular bar, and some guy would be at the door, and you had to know somebody, and then, like, sometimes you'd be given rules. Like, one guy would be like, don't fuck around with anybody in this place. Don't say a word to know. You know what no, I mean? I've been, I've been uh, after hours place even in Manhattan. It's just someone's house. Some no, this apartment. is this is more than somebody's and house. Tried, the guy, the, the guy goes, "What do you want? A vodka and OJ?" He takes the OJ out of his fucking refrigerator. He charges yeah. twenty bucks. So we're just hanging at some guy's house. No, this is this is like a you know a regular bar. Oh, in this neighborhood, it used to be you go to like a garment building and the elevator. Oh open, yeah. And there'd be some just Italian guy sitting there in a pair of cabaricis and like a sleeveless mock turtleneck. Yeah, but you never have to worry about it. Was his loft? It was an after. It was like a nightclub. Yeah. Uh -oh. they had have, gambling tables. They brought yeah, in like roulette. Nobody rules. ever had a problem there. If you were a dick, you know it would be the outcome. It used to be yeah, Cokey Cokies over in uh, Williamsburg. Um, it's a place, in, a place where you could buy coke from the bartender, but then <laughs> throw you out if you, were, if you use any swear words. You get one warning. Oh, it's oh like, really? Yeah, it's yeah, like, that's so weird. Yeah, no, we heard it totally it's like random. Vegas. Everything's the, you, you can do anything, but you can't chew gum. Oh, that's you right. You can't chew gum. Why? Because I don't. I think they well, don't probably want the gum on the, They don't right? want gum on the floor, or whatever. In the cards or they don't maybe sell the gum. They don't chew gum. You can't. You're not supposed to curse either. Well, I guess either. No, but the gum I can see. You know why? Because it's like gets stuck in the cards, like you said, or distraction. Yeah, and someone yeah, might put it in a slot machine. Could be a cheating signal. Somebody blows yeah, a bubble. Cheating signal. That's the main <laughs> you thing. Just can't leave. No, that's no, that's the main thing. It's a cheating signal. They don't give a shit yeah. about the cards yeah. or about anything else. Two pops, it's a full Two house. Pops means you got a full house. Yeah. Somebody, the gum lands <laughs> on your nose. Come out like this. You're giving signals to your buddy. No, no, the, the, the gum lands on your nose. You got four aces. You know what I mean? Hit me. Oh <laughs> Think about it. It's probably true. Oh. That's what it is it true, is. Mike. Sometimes you hit it right on the nail. No, it's about the dollars. Poor Helen Keller couldn't see those cards. <laughs> Yeah, you should go like in, in when they narrated. You go like, hey, can somebody tell me what I have? <laughs> like in, in red or black. Texas holding me. Like, can somebody tell me my two old cards? No, no. Like, I in, do terribly every time I gamble. In casino, it's like when Pesci was narrowing, he goes, "The bosses are always one hundred dollars." I love that whole movie. reference. You so remember what? that Casino Casino? No, but I never saw it. No, but, I, actually, I think I saw it once. He said, he said, Pesci what said that, and he goes, to the bosses, it was always about the dollars. And he's right, like the casinos. That's what it is. Well, I like when Vegas tried to reinvent themselves in the mid-90s. That's like a family destination, and that didn't take. That was for like, then. now that's like what happens in Vegas stays in stays yeah, in Vegas. Yeah, Treasure Island. They had all these family-friendly no, casinos. Yeah, yeah. I, I took my, my brother stuff. used to, yeah. my brother used to take his kids to Vegas. He would go gamble and leave them in the room. They were like, you know, Whoa. 10, 11, 12, so he probably shouldn't have done it. Gamble right in the room. Huh? You gamble right in the TV. No, you can now, but it, you couldn't then. But he would go down and gamble. He would say, you know, if any if anything happens, call me. But that, even that's still dangerous, you know. The track is fun. Huh? The tra race track is kind of fun. Yeah, of course it is. Make a day, it spend does. a day there. With your dad. <laughs> that used to be the thing where you, your dad would take you to the track. It's fun, yeah. I did shows in Vegas with uh, our friend Eddie Ift and Jim Jeffries. Oh, you know Eddie? Yeah. yeah I but, know Eddie for a long oh, time. He's not a comic, but no. he, he knows a lot. Of, oh, he's well. friends with, I yeah. met him from Eddie Ift and Eddie, Jim yeah. Jeffries. Oh, nice. I used to do podcasts with Eddie Ift and Jim Jeffries in Los Angeles. That's, oh, how, that's they, how we all know each other. Nice. They, yeah. I love Eddie. Hey, sure. yeah, so. hey, you know Eddie from just here? From New York, yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. How long, how, when did you start doing stand-up in New York? 92. Oh, that's about right. Eddie was 35, I'm guessing. In 92? Yeah. No. He's obsessed with 
being. No, but he's, he would have been a good. Politi- I think yeah. he ran for mayor or governor, I think, or something. He's and, really. You know what's so sad politi- about LA? Like, everybody looks young until they don't. Like, because everybody's obsessed with it. And then at some point, you can't fight it. Like, you see these guys, you haven't seen them in a while, and then all of a sudden you see them and you go, like, holy fuck, that guy's old look. Jamie Kennedy looks like he's 90 now. He does? I'm only kidding. <laughs> oh. no, but I'm talking about, like, just guys, you know, like, like you know, not just people in front of the camera, just, like, agents and managers, you know, and they, and then it's just, like, once you're old, you're old. There's nothing they can do. Is but it true nobody curses in L.A. to get upset? Because the thing is, you won't get a job if you look old. Yeah, I, when we, uh, we we went to, we went to the house out there, and I had a realtor show us around, and he said, "What do you do?" And I said, "Well, I'm a producer, and I have a TV production company." And he hit he a bunch of headshots like over his like river windshield thing, you know, and he pulls them out, and it was like probably th- 25 years old his headshot, and one Whoa. of them he's like a cop, another he's like a doctor. You know? <laughs> oh <laughs> fuck, I've been through that, and I felt badly, and he goes, you know, and his resume's on the back, and it's stapled to the thing. He was ready to go, and then he goes, you know, I used to be, um, I used to do bit parts on Bonanza. He goes, I was a recurring character on Bonanza, and my wife was outside of our car. She's in the stores I mean, with my baby with the baby and i said to him i said you know my wife is a real bonanza fan so i said when she gets <laughs> i love that show too I said, when you come back in the car i said why don't you ask her some bonanza trivia because <laughs> the house we rented was like up in west lake village kind of up by, by, by malibu where they used to shoot bonanza so like we get in the car and he's like you can tell he's excited we get to a red light and he goes hey over here is where you know hoss and the engine you know like the engine. <laughs> and like, like what are you talking so i felt badly for him i said after a minute or two i was like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She doesn't know what you're talking about. So Ask him what his Hop Singh's first name yeah, exactly. really. Right, right. <laughs> Hop Singh. Remember the Oriental customer? Right now, oh, God. Hey, tell us about when you uh, you were telling us the other day about uh, when you um, did warm up for Carson Daly. Oh yeah, warm up the Carson oh, nice. Daly. Yeah. Is, is he, well, he wasn't. He just he just recently was blind. Yeah, you weren't blind then, right? Oh, really? No, no, it was about twelve years ago. But uh, yo, it's just funny because uh, you know Jordan Rubin. Yes. Yeah. So Jordan, I he's pr- a good guy, man. I love yeah. him. Not a good guy. Oh really? Yeah, guy. I don't know. He's all right. I don't. He was always nice. I don't know. Him forever, but I mean. I, like who is who's been mean to you? There's a lot of douchebags. You say this guy's not. No, I'm talking about Twitter trolls. I'm talking about real people that we know. Oh, uh, can I do an impression? Oh yeah. Hey Cam, this is Barry calling from LA. Well, Barry was He's a dick fucking, to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a douche. From was he ever one. your manager? No, thank God. Well, how was he a dick to you? I'll give you a good idea. I was having a meeting with him like 12 years ago, right? And he called me in. He goes like this, have some granola, Mike, you know, like some fucking bullshit snack. He was, you know, probably fucking had fucking money in that douchebag. What do you call it? Well, I'm sorry. Let me he's a Jew. Going. Just say he's a Jew. No, I don't say that stuff. I'm not that kind of guy like that. He's yeah. an idiot no matter what the fuck he oh. is. So anyway, he goes, so then he, he, he gives me his Barry interview. He's like, um, what do you say to me? He goes, hey, Mike, what's your goal five years from now to be? Oh, he does that. Right. So I go, so I go, I said to him, I go, I love Adam. I love Adam Sandler, which I totally do love Sandler. Right. And he goes, first of all, Adam's younger than you. He's not a fat guy. He's giving me all kinds of bullshit. Right. And And you were meeting him to maybe have him. But you know what happened? I was so I had an audition that night for the Tonight Show and I was all worked up on his douchebag. You were set? To, to audition for it. Okay. That's another story in itself, what happened to me there. Johnny was on it? No, no, no. I waited four years on the list for The Tonight Show. Four fucking, and I got passed on. That's not right. What did Barry no. Katz do to you that... He was just such a dick. He was like, right. well, yeah, all kinds of shit me nonsense. Well, Barry's trying to, like, be, you know... No, but he was just a total to scum be, about it. keep it real with you. Like, what's your goal? No, but, like, no, but he meant it, but then he was, I could see how condescending that fucking dickweed is. He said to me one time, one time I did a set at Boston, and I completely just fucking killed, you know? It was you most- were dead at night. I ate it in front of him 20 years ago. And then it was mostly, <laughs> mostly crowd work, you know, whatever. And uh, so, any, but anyway, I killed, you know, so I get off, and then... Uh, he goes, Barry goes, so now we're going to bring up the energy of the room. I'm like, I just fucking killed. I know. You know? What a moron. Why are you going to, like, insult me? Is he hosting? Yeah, he was. He used to host. So, oh, God. And, that must have been a Jim fucking. Brewer, Jim Brewer was coming up, and I didn't know Jim Brewer. And Jim Brewer, and Jim Brewer did have a lot of energy, you know? Jim is great. But I anyway, so it's like for him to, like, backhanded insult me to right. to to compliment He's the king of that, guy. though. Huh? He's the king of that, that fucking clown. Yeah, he's a real fucking con. Is he rich? Oh yeah. No, but he's he's bad with he's he's bad with business. Everybody hate everybody in Boston hate him because he would never pay people. He would always go like, "I'll give you, I, I'll pay you next week." I'll give anyway, you so a sandwich. Story, okay, story. so so Jordan Rubin, I, I produced my own uh, beauty pageant uh, where I uh, and I had Jordan as a, as a as one of my celebrity judges, and he goes, "Hey, um, he goes, I'm a writer for the um, Carson Daly show," and he goes, "Would you like to um." come on the show and we, we we don't want to have a comedian but we want somebody that does warm up and come up and oh, nice. you know, do prizes and whatever so i uh, i'm like yeah that sounds great so it was like a week later 
I put on a suit. I don't know. I kind of get there, and they put me in Horatio Sands' dressing room. There's a big fruit platter there and all this shit and stuff. And, and then I meet the stage manager, who apparently Jordan comes over to me, and he goes, listen, the stage manager used to uh, do the warm-up. And he's really upset that you're here. Oh, so no. he doesn't want you here. But it'll be fine. So I meet the stage manager who's clearly gay, but like is a self loathing homosexual. Like he doesn't really want to be gay. So he's, and he's kind of like, so he's like angry with me because I'm even there. And he gives me this big box of like uh, DVDs and hats and shit to give out. And he goes, all right, you go out there and, um, you know, do whatever you're just going to do. And he really left me hanging. He gives me a microphone and people coming in. And nobody really wants to see Carson Daly, right? I, mean, I like him, Max. I'm, sure, I'm sure he's a very nice guy. But what I mean is, you don't come to New York City. Like, you want to see Letterman, you know. You, oh, this you is know, New York. Okay. This is in New York. Yeah, you want to see it. This, they, they, was it the Rockefeller? Yeah, 30 Rock. I was thinking this is oh, no. You know, yeah, he's right. You're, he's, he's like bottom of the, bottom of the totem yeah, pole. He's, nobody's like coming in from like Schenectady. To be like, <laughs> rather, people would rather, rather watch Rosie than watch. You know, oh, 100%. Me too. I love Maury Rosie, Pope. actually. I thought you said Ro Rosie was a she don't take any crap from people oh. so I like her. She's a yeah who cares though all right, right. or both you wouldn't take any crap from people any either I'm, I'm super militant um <laughs> super militant if you ever want a sailboat uh so <laughs> anyway so the guy goes so I get there and now the the, the the band that was playing was our hip-hop band called fab fabulous or fabulous oh no and um so the audience with all these young black girls and guys whatever and then other people just you know whatever so i'm out there and i decided that i was just i don't really have like material necessarily and and i guess i could do crowd work so i have this microphone and i'm talking to the audience and and i um i said to this one black girl I, and i'm giving her and the dvds they had were like from the hallmark channel it was like you oh, know no. like the days of wine and roses or whatever <laughs> <laughs> you know well, i'm proud for this right? 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 jack lemon's the apartment you know like, <laughs> <laughs> so i go i got these dvds and so i'm giving hats away and I go this one uh, young black girl and I, and I said I said so what's the new um what's the new ghetto slang term that I maybe I haven't heard because I you know and she goes ghetto slang she goes I live in Scarsdale and I go oh, oh okay. motherfucker yeah you motherfucker right I'm gangster bitch I need a gangster bitch so I go um I said oh sorry <laughs> you didn't give me an answer no she goes what are you a racist and you could feel the energy in the room I'm sure you're both very aware of, 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 of this whole you energy you were trying to be racist you were just really I just, curious I was just goofing around like yeah. I was just because we're fabulous is a very street band and like yeah. they were a raucous crowd. So then the whole audience, I hear them start hissing at me. Oh, with no. a band? No, like the, the audience. The whole audience. <laughs> like, like is somebody doing a sound check? <laughs> yeah, they're like, is there somebody somebody leave the hose on? Uh so I'm so then the the stage. Oh well, black people over. hiss at you, it's done. Oh, it's done. There's no coming back from it's it. It's like showtime at the Apollo. Once they start making a fucking <laughs> clown comes <Hey>! out. <laughs> Big, you're done. Clown, Once clown they hiss you, you're done. You can't. You can't come back. From it. Yeah, so you can't the, make fun of the hiss. You can't make fun of the Sandman. So, you, then, the you're done. so then the closeted uh, stage manager comes over and he goes, "Roger Clemens is stuck in traffic. Need to do another half an hour." Roger Clemens. Yeah, he was one of the guests. Who's wow. like Roger Clemens and Fabulous and somebody else. I'm like another half an hour, and I, I was almost out of stuff. And I had one more DVD, and I'm like, "Well, fuck it." So I said, "This guy up top." I go, "Who wants a DVD?" And they told it like, "Holy go frisbee!" And it was an old white guy, and I oh, no. hit him on his forehead and i cut his forehead oh fuck. It's, like, it's like a scene from a movie <laughs> this, should, this should be a short film put it, it out there a dvd at anybody no. i he i saw his hands go up and maybe i had been blind longer than i've realized <laughs> <laughs> but um he throws his hands up and i went and he, he missed it and i hit him so then all of a sudden his wife goes he's it and so all of a he's sudden it. She's he's it. It. He's <laughs> upstairs. some some somebody some he's like jfk in 1963 oh, <laughs> <laughs> holy square <laughs> so then she, so you go up with the first aid kit and they, oh, they did it. I swear to God, they put it. It was just a little. <laughs> you had a fucking eight, <laughs> eight foot band aid. I mean, owning Rockefeller Center. They're waving people in like the like that girl at the, the Yankee oh, game like, the other day when she got hit by a foul ball. Get him! We need help right now. Oh no! Forget that. Hit, if you get hit by that foul ball, you'll be a fucking zillionaire. Like, I, 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 my head. Zillionaire. You get a couple of grands. So that was it, and then like then finally Robert Clemens showed up, and I get the microphone back, and then I, you know, I, I, you introduced him as Robert Clemens. <laughs> no, well they were like, no black or white culture. I have no white. I'm gonna have a Robbie Clemens. Robert Clemens. <laughs> Next we got Helen Clemens and teach us all that. No, it is fucked up when money. I tell you to stretch. It is. Yeah. I, when I used to warm, I did warm up at Spin City here. Oh, cool. And oh, it nice. was at the second season. Uh, they would they uh, Michael J. Fox. I didn't know at the time, but he was he was already having problems, you right. know, oh, with wow. his with his disease. Parkinson. Yeah, and then uh, and so he sometimes he they weren't ready. Like he would have, to, I think he would have to take medication. So whatever whatever symptoms he had would 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 like would uh, 
to calm down. So they would go, you know, we need you to stretch. So I would do a long time. And like, then the crowd gets kind of annoyed with you because at some point you're going to say something inappropriate, you know, right. but they don't know what you're, you know, you, they don't know what you're hearing. They don't know. Right. They, they just think, why is this guy? Why, why won't this guy shut the fuck up? So they don't, a lot of times they don't know. And, uh, like Michael J. Fox is making the world's best martini him. back there. So yeah. you tell me which fan he cannot start. Exactly. I love oh. Fox. Huh? I think he's great. Michael Who J. Fox. Who don't? Who don't? I'm going to fucking have to choke meet you, idiot. Bushetti. No, I'm You serious. act like I'm slamming a guy. I love the guy. No, I, I know fucking you love the guy. He was great to me on Spin City. <laughs> and uh, and uh, one time he was on Spin One time he was on Conan when he was still on Spin City. And he, he was talking about, and I don't even know why Conan brought it up, but he goes, he goes, it, he goes, it must be weird. He goes, you know, our warm up guy only does like five minutes before the show. And uh, it, it, his job's kind of easy. You know, it's a short show. He goes, sitcom tapings take forever, right? They're like 30, they're like three hours long. And then Michael J. Fox goes, yeah, we used to have this guy. He was basically like an insult comic, speaking about me, you know? Right, right, right. I, would, I didn't work there anymore. And, uh, and I'm watching at home. And he goes, yeah, I would come out from, you know, my dressing room. I'd be trying to learn lines. I would come out and I would hear this guy. The warm-up guy to say to this woman, like, wow, you're really fat. How much you weigh? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I never said that, you know? But he was just, you know, embellishing the story. And I'm sitting there watching home. I'm like, say my name, you <laughs> fucking midget. Say my <laughs> name, you fucking half-dwarf. Because I just want the credit for, like, because it would be great for my fucking resume. Yeah, my real, sure. as yeah. they say, oh, you know. Real, huh? This is before YouTube, but it's still nice to, and he wouldn't say my name. So then the next day, the next time I do Conan, I go, I go, you remember when Michael was here? And uh, Frank Smiley, I go, remember he, he was, he goes, he was talking about me. He goes, I know. I go, why are you, why you haven't said my name? He goes, because I, we thought it was, many, I go, inappropriate. It would have been perfect. Right. I know. Is Conan nice to you? Yeah, Conan's great. But my, but Michael J. Fox was great. He would always come into the audience and, you know, and he was really funny or just off the cuff. A lot of, a lot of comics aren't funny off the cuff. No. And, and uh, most actors aren't funny off the cuff, oh. but he was hilarious. Good. And he was a sweet guy and whatever. So, uh, but it's hard. It's hard when you when you gotta do when you gotta do warm up and they tell you to stretch. Even when you do stand up and they tell you to stretch, like the crowd the crowd's sick of you. And a lot of times you if you gotta do 15 minutes, and they, and you're doing your best 15, and they tell you to stretch, you can't even follow yourself. Just do it again. Just do the next. Just did, I, did I did I tell this story when I opened for a uh, um, uh, Ray Charles? I think I did. I tell this oh, story Charles, on the really? other show. Yes. No, for Ray Charles, and I didn't even earn the gig. My it was in Worcester, and my brother-in-law was like running the 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 whatever they call it up there. It was like a small. It was like a, he ran the the big Centrum up there, but there was a the Ray Charles was playing at the small arena, but it was still or the smaller theater. It was still like five thousand seats, you oh. know. So uh, so he calls me. He goes, you want to do warm for Ray Charles? And I was like nervous, you know. I, whatever. When was this? It's like 1992 or whatever. Oh, oh god! So I was like, I didn't even have that much, you know. They do, you know, you do ten minutes or whatever. Of course, he's late. Like, I don't know, I don't think he's driving himself, but, like, you can't get mad when a fucking blind guy's late, you know? But it's still annoying, because you're like, so I, they go, you know, uh, he's not here. When I, I think when I went out, they go, they, uh, he's not here yet, so if we, if we, you know, give you a signal, you got to stretch, whatever. So I got to stretch, and then one guy goes, in the audience, he goes, where's Ray? Like, I guess they knew I was out of material. I was doing, it's hard to do crowd work when there's 5,000 yeah, people. Sure. Like, hey, nice shirt, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can see the guy in the front row with the funny shirt. Yeah, yeah right. So I go, so so one guy goes, uh, hey, Ray, where's Ray Charles? I go, I go, listen. I, and I wasn't even doing it good. I go, listen, Ray said, uh, Ray, Ray, I said, Ray Charles handpicked me to open for him. So don't give me shit. I go, he, he met me, said, I'd like to give young black comedians a chance, you know? <laughs> he said that. Yeah. And I got a big laugh, you know? And, uh, so I basically saved the set. I didn't have that plan, but you know, but, uh, luckily I'm very glib. No, but uh, no, but I was in it. You got to say something when you get heckled yeah. and oh, God, they tell yeah. you to stretch, you got to say something because the crowd is it's done with you. They want, they come to see Ray Charles. I'm not famous. It's not like I'm an opening act. I'm just warming up the fucking crowd right. for Ray Charles. Did you meet him? No, because he got so late, and then and then and then he was a dick anyway. Black and blind. Oh, really? Black, black yeah, and blind. Talk about, it's gonna be a double late. Talk about quality parking. <laughs> no, so so he gets there late, you know, and then the, the that was when he was on the Pepsi commercials when he was doing the fucking when oh, he got yeah, the yeah. hot girls, and they they were just actresses because the the real the Raylettes or whatever right. they were hogs. Yeah, old they, were, they would look like they they were like a bunch of Aunt Jemimas and oh, they were not good looking. Uh -huh. But again, he can't see. Maybe they tell him they're good looking. You know, yeah, who knows? Well, you feel, remember he would feel their arms in the movie. That's how he knew if they were hot or not. Oh, really? You feel that he would say you feel their arms. How can you tell? <clears throat> because you know if they have nice arms. Oh yeah, 
Generally well, speaking, a nice arm is not going to thin arm. No, thin arm, yeah. And, and, but a, th- a nice, a, a nice arm will not be on an ugly person. That was his thing. Yeah. No, you can tell because you know what? Well, like, going to feel like. Look at these high. Look at his. Look at his. Look at his screen. They they brought up the commercial. Like they were not young. They were not. They were not slim. No, but sometimes you see like Stevie Wonder's wife, and you're like. She's so hot. You're like, isn't that a waste? They got you married. Don't even... they got, they're not married anymore. They just got divorced. No, but I'm why? No, but um, I'm saying when he when a blind guy's a hot wife, what's the point? He can't see her anyway. Yeah, but you can feel. I mean, you, I, you I, don't I, want her to be. You don't want to. You want her to be hot, like physically hot. Anyway, so uh, then then somebody goes. So he's at this place. You know, I'm his opening act, and somebody yells out halfway through the show, "Sing Georgia!" And he goes, he goes, "Listen, I have an order." I do them in a, I do them in a set. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Man. No, what just fucking, fucking I, play Georgia. I'm not for fucking idiot. Yeah, like, like, because it, it makes him look like a dick. Because the rest of the show, the crowd was like, oh, this guy's a dick. He is like, a dick. Like, <laughs> like if they say play Georgia, and then he goes, yeah, I'm gonna play, but instead he fucking scolds them. Right. Like I do it in a certain order. Like just play the fucking song. Nobody gives. So it's not Stairway to Heaven. It, it's you're gonna, lucky they're even here. You're not. You're not. You know, he was. He was get. Like, he got heat off the fucking Pepsi commercials, but he was not like hot no. you know what i mean and it was like his last hurrah so i know be a dick what's gonna cost him to sing another fucking song idiot people there to say or it, do know? it out of order come on the band you think the band can't fucking figure it out no. cheers he's like all right well, kevin get, get back up here half an hour oh we got to get the tuba player what <laughs> hey, back up, you know they gotta get the tuba player. oh yeah they gotta they get, get the get they gotta get the sheet music yeah, hold on everybody who said them- sheet J- Kevin, Kev- oh, Kevin Brennan, everybody. Oh, I know. Yeah. Some people are so conservative. You say sheet. They're like, did you curse? Oh, no. Sheet is fine. I did a gig one time. And they, I did. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's ghetto slang for sheet. Sheet. No, but no, I did a. No, it, it is. I, I was in. It. No, it is. That's what I'm saying. Some people, like, they look for reasons. I was in uh, Oklahoma, and, I, and they called me at the hotel. I was in like this, it was just a very conservative, and it was a college, you know? They go, can you not say, they, they say, we don't want you to oh, say no. certain words. And they said, the F word. I said, what what words don't you want me to say? The F words, S word, uh, the C, they didn't even say the C word because they wouldn't even they think. Exist. Yeah. Anyway, so then they go, uh, they say GD. I go, what's GD? They say, God damn. I go, holy fuck. No, but seriously, like, if, <laughs> if they say you can't say God damn, like, what can you say? Because right. every joke is of every joke in my act. As I'm doing my joke, I'm like, "Oh, this offends this people." Every joke could be offensive. It, with the it, word yeah. shit rag. No, so they want they want a guy with a they want a guy with a puppet. Everybody wants Jeff Dunham, but they can't afford him. That they got the puppets. Yeah, so they get me, and then and then you know, and then after the show, I go, "How was that?" They go, "Have you ever been fined after a show?" I go, "What?" They go, "Yeah, you we didn't, you know." I'm like, "Come on, man." So they don't so ridiculous. They money away from you. Because no, they tried, oh. but I'm saying don't, 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 don't have a show. It's just like when you when you watch people do shows and you're like, come on, man, don't have a show. Right. If you're gonna have a problem with every fucking word people say, or don't be Ray Charles either. Don't be a fucking cunt performer. I you know what I mean, it's not the stu- it's not the students. Sometimes it's the fucking administration. It's a nightmare, probably. Of course, it's administration. The students don't give a shit unless, in this case, they did because they're they're religious and oh, okay. and again, religious people are crazy. They all they're, they're, they're do their homework to not book you ahead of time. You know what no, I mean? No, because like, they see five minutes and my five minutes is clean. But again, they got duped. Right. It's like I'm like the girl with the fucking like the <laughs> tissue that comes out. Yeah, no, with the tits, with the nice bra, and then it's right, you can take, you take, take off the off bra. It. They got nothing. Right. <laughs> Cat Williams at Oral Roberts University. No, I, I <laughs> sometimes I would do a show and I'd be I and you know, I if the crowd was like real riled up, I do all my best stuff at the beginning. And I in my head I'm like, I know I'm gonna lose them. But I gotta, I gotta keep them for the ten minutes. I gotta get at least ten minutes instead of spreading the jokes out, which I should have done. Like they're, they're hopped up, so I give them a lot of, I give them hot material. I know the jokes that are gonna work, and then after ten minutes, I know we're basically gonna be staring at each other. But it's like at least they had their ten minutes. You know what I mean? So how many minutes do they want you to do? They want to do an hour. Whoa. I can't do an hour now. <laughs> Thirty years later, I can't do an hour. Oh, minutes six times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear to God, I still can't, like, still doing an hour is fucking hard because people don't want to listen for an hour. No, so they, they, they have classes that last 45 minutes because they know people can't listen for an hour. Especially they want the you to do an hour. Out. Huh? Especially the millennials won't listen for more than eight eight minutes. You have no attention. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, because they're on their phones. They're on their phones. I mean, I don't even know how you do colleges now. I guess they tell them you can't you can't use their phones, but then they're going to use their phones anyway because they're cunts. Was it Chris Rock that said he wouldn't do colleges anymore, or somebody? Or... It don't matter. Chris Rock's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Okay. After I called Chris Rock an asshole. Oh, okay. oh it was Jerry Seinfeld who said it. He said there it's too PC. It is too PC because they because they 
they they anything you say it's like it's like christian colleges 20 years ago where like anything you say they're going to be like that's offensive to blind people that's offensive like even if i brought you on a show mm -hmm. into a college they would still say my blind jokes are inappropriate even if you came as as my guest right. or my my opening act that's what i should do yeah, yeah. Should have you be my opening act and then i do and then i do 50 minutes of blind jokes just all just all like i got out of a book <laughs> yeah, you hear about the blind <laughs> People be like, why you do a lot of blind jokes? Like, you know, because I can't get in trouble because I'm hiring this right. fucking, this blind. fucking Helen Keller. Oh, shit. Polish jokes. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be funny. I don't know, man. But I, it's funny. I, I'll tell you very quickly. I, Chris Rock. Remember that movie that he made? Uh, it was like a, it was a parody of NWA. It was like his first movie. Yeah. The fuck is it called? I yeah. I mean, what, uh, what was it called? CB4. Thank you. Hey, there you go. CB4. Thank. Hey, good call. Thanks. How good the booth is. Great. Um, but anyway, so he, uh, I worked for at a restaurant called Cafe Tabac, if you remember that place. This is way a long time ago, 91. Oh, and, where was uh, this? Ninth Street, 2nd and 3rd Avenue. And um, I was a food runner, and I brought the food out. And it was like everybody from like the early 90s would go there, like uh, Madonna, uh, fucking Terrence Trent Darby, and whatever. So Chris Rock is sitting there, and I brought over his meal, and I put it in front of him. And I just saw CB4, and I put his food down, and I said, I just saw CB4. And I just walk away, and the manager comes over, and he goes, Chris Rock wants to talk to you. I'm like, okay. So I go out to talk to Chris Rock, and he goes, what would you think of CB4? And he had the big smile on his face, and I said, I'd like my $8 back. And he, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And his face fell, and I said, I'm just, it was very funny, and I just walked away. And then, uh, yeah. Not as funny as my comment, but funny. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Oh, no. So what do you do now? Do you do, sh what do you do? You, I feel like you got something in your hands. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm gonna doing a couple of plugs. You want to okay. plug anything, Mike? Actually, I was going to ask Twitter. you. Twitter. How much... Holy shit! I just I, I couldn't see your your uh, your little beard with my gla my sunglasses on. Yeah, but I was going to ask you: Do you have stuff on 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 Raw Dog? Oh yeah, why are you bring that up? Well, because I'm hosting something tomorrow for them. I oh, get you to know play what? My favorite I, comics. Great, that's a great segue. You know what? Here's the thing. With here's the thing. People go like somebody just texted me yesterday or Facebook. They go, how you know? I've been a fan of yours for a couple of years. How come you don't they don't play more of your stuff on Sirius? I go, I go. Don't tell me. Tell them to tweet. To Sirius at Sirius at Sirius XM that you want that they want uh, that you want me to that you want to hear my joke. Well, I'm hosting tomorrow. Yeah, so out. play me. Yeah, but of that's, course. How, that's how it gets done. But the fans are like, "How come?" I go, "Don't worry about it. Just tell them to. You can tweet it. If if everyone tweets to play me, they'll play me. I get to host my favorite that comics. Simple. Huh? I get to host my favorite comics. So 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 it's just, it's just you know people go like, "When are you gonna come to my city?" I'm like, "When are you gonna When are you gonna tell them to book me?" You know what I mean? It's like that's how shit works now. It's gotta be like fucking a groundswell because they they're not just gonna go. They, that's listen. It's not. It's uh, everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's not complicated. No. If you want if you want serious to play me, tell them to play me. If you no. want your town to book me, tell them to book me. I anyway, I picked out already. So at Sirius XM, yeah, whatever. Mod yeah. I'm guessing Modi. It's a dice man is on it. I love him. I'm at Montrose, Montrose, PA, October 14th. I don't even know what the fuck. Live show is. tomorrow? They're taping it tomorrow. Okay, cool. I'm at Helium, Philadelphia, November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Cool. And that's all I'm plugging right now. Go to my website. I got to put more dates up. And, uh, uh, and Bruce, shout out to Bruce at Hudson Web Development. Uh, he lives in my building. <laughs> I feel like such an idiot. <laughs> But it really is convenient to have a guy because they'll be walking his dog. His dog's blind. He wants to bring him in to see if you guys uh, we, we hit it off. If you guys connect. <laughs> no, but his dog, same with you. Same disease, going blind. Oh, really? Yeah. So he wants to bring it in. Anyway, Hutz at Hudson Web Development. He does a great website. <clears throat> Brian P. McCarthy at Twitter. What do you? What's your Twitter? Uh, Mike Boschardi at Twitter. Same. How about story. Instagram. What do you use more? Twitter. Uh, Twitter. I usually like to battle with people on there sometimes. Really? Yeah, the douchebags. I'm guessing. Yeah, they come at Mike pretty hard because you know Mike's, you know, what I'm Morons. Low hanging fruit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh hey, low hanging fruit. Uh so God bless. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys. AA coming up next. Hey, Shout out to Mike Boschetti and Brian P. McCarthy for having me on the show. <laughs>